قل يا أيها الكافرون لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم عابدين ما أعبدتم ولا أنا عبد ما أعبدتم ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد لكم دينكم واليدين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم
Hello, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Walik Snam, sir, Awaz Ari. Ji, ji, bilkul, bilkul. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Clear. Uh, okay, guys, sorry about that uh, for the delay. How is everyone doing? Alhamdulillah, how are you? Very good, very good, Alhamdulillah. <coughs> Sir Adnan? Uh, yes. I have my friend named Muhammad Javed. Okay. Uh, he he has done already CCN and CCNP, right? Uh -huh. So usually he takes some of the help from me. So okay. So he was talking to me, and I said, "This is what I'm doing right now with you." Okay. So, okay. So he is interested, and he is with me, sitting with me right now. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. And and uh, he want to join, and uh, I, I think he uh, I gave uh, Amin bhai number two uh -huh. to him, so he spoke to him. But anyways, so he is with me and I, he is interested to continue with us. Okay. Okay. That's very good. Uh, Muhammad Javed. Okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Muhammad Javed. How are you? Yes, well, Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So, uh, so, uh, so at the moment we are, you can, you can think that we are still at, in, in kind of in the beginning. So we're not too far away. Uh, from uh, basic, so CCNA, you finished CCNA, uh, which means that you've got a, a good idea of switches and routers. Have you worked on, uh, I mean, on switches and routers as well? Yeah, hello. Okay, okay, very okay. good. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm listening. Okay, okay, very How's good. <laughs> So okay, so I'm so I'm gonna so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna continue with the normal pace. Uh, so if there is any extra help required, so I'll be here, um, inshallah. And we all work in team, and you will get a lot of help here. Yeah, yeah inshallah. So, so just let me let us know all of us. Uh, let me know as well wherever you need uh, some help. Okay. Okay. So everyone, uh, let's uh, begin. So from the last week, I think everyone is uh, working on a custom lab. Custom lab is a very important component of this uh, training. Uh, so mm -hmm. most of you have shared the screenshots. Most of you have shared uh, the custom lab uh, screenshots with me. And that's good. Uh, um, can you some of you, uh, can you also share with me if some, if anyone is able to complete task one, two, and three okay. uh, in the chat window? Just type in the chat window if you were able to go through the uh, go through the tasks from the custom lab, or if anyone has any problems doing the custom lab. Okay, so today we are. Uh, on mod module one of this training, uh, it, it, and this training is 70-741. Uh, 70-741 uh, is the second training uh, in regards to, this, is, this training is all in regards to networking and understanding the infrastructure. The first training was mostly in regards to understanding the server, server installation and, and configuring the server. The last training, the third training uh, in this will be everything about security. So the third training will be about uh, Active Directory, how to set up the users, how to set up permissions, how these uh, big organizations using Active Directory. I mean, security is a very important component of uh, all organizations. Okay, just a second. I'm trying to just open the whiteboard here. 
So today's lecture will be interesting for our new friend uh, Javed as well, uh, as this is all about IP address. So, and for all of us, uh, it will be a bit interesting. It involves some maths, but not uh, a lot of maths here. So more than mathematics, IP addressing is about technique. So we need to learn the technique and we need to learn the IP address. So far, what we understand about IP address, it's a unique number that needs to be uh, assigned to all the devices that are on the network. But we need to have a good understanding of this IP address. This is why there is a full chapter dedicated for this. So how many people are logged in? So we have uh, Alamgir, we have Naveed, Wasim, Salim, uh, Zishan. And how many people are missing? So please type yes in the chat window, everyone. Uh, So Human is not here, Ashish is not here, and who else is not here? Okay. So uh, just a quick reminder, the best way to attend the training, uh, best way to attend uh, the training is uh, the presentation through the link and uh, the audio from your phone. But if your computer audio is working fine, it's, uh, it's excellent. Uh, but uh, sometimes, you know, when you need to ask a question, to ask a question, uh, sometimes the, the computer audio is not uh, enough. So for that, if you can dial in from your local number, that will be excellent. So why, am I, why I am asking that if people are uh, missing, because today's lecture is very, very important. So if, uh, if someone can just uh, message them, just message them, no need to call them, that will be excellent. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, today's lecture is about IP address. So planning and implementing IP address. So in this training, there will be eight modules. First module is about planning and implementing IP address. Second will be about DHCP. So first of all, here in this uh, first module, everyone, I need your attention. Uh, so again, we will be learning all, uh, we will be using our all our learning senses, uh, listening, uh, and then writing, taking notes, and then discussion, uh, a discussion with others, explaining it to someone, and uh, the uh, and, and practical. So doing it. So all four learning senses, if we use, uh, and uh, so so that will help us within the interviews. That will help us within the practical environment. And this is the technique that is the best technique to learn anything, and especially IT. But it is the best best technique to learn everything. So here, I am going to. So uh, again, since it is a start of a new training, uh, everyone, I need to see your notes at the end of this uh, training. Please do not sit idle uh, since it is an online training and uh, in online training, we are sitting at, at the comfort of our home. And uh, sometimes there are a lot of distractions. So especially for the training, especially for this, uh, because we are focusing on getting a job in the market. So our focus is getting a job in the market. Our focus is not to get new knowledge. Our focus is not to uh, just learn something new for being interesting. No, uh, we need to get a job in the market, which means that it is a very, very serious task for us, for our family, for our future. And um, how many people have finished this task before? Many, many, many people have finished this task, but we need to use all our learning senses. So all learning, so here, learning. Uh, 
Learning senses, number one, hearing. Number two, uh, so hearing or listening. Number two, writing. Number three, discussion, saying it. And number four, practical, doing. Okay, so it's, uh, especially in all these trainings, I mean, I've, I've seen that because I, I use that, I'm not just saying that uh, for the sake of uh, saying it. No, I practically used it many times whenever I do, whenever I go into trainings and if I uh, start, uh, I mean, yes, we are learning, we are, I mean, we are hearing, we are listening. Uh, but most of the time what happens is that if we, uh, so if you are continuously just listening to something uh, within 15, 20 minutes, you will, you're, you, you, uh, the brain starts moving here and there uh, all the time. And then you need to bring that brain back. But if you're writing uh, with listening, uh, then it is, uh, then basically the brain is more focused. So uh, writing doesn't mean that you have to write each and every word. You need to write at least the pointers, the main pointers of everything. And, but if you write more, that will be excellent too. So how many of you agree, uh, how many of you agree with, uh, with, these, uh, with this uh, way of learning? Just maybe type that in the chat window or you can unmute and also agree or disagree. Okay, so two people agreed, uh, actually all agreed, uh, excellent. So, um, so uh, keep writing, keep using the chat window as well, just to keep uh, yourself engaged. And uh, so we wanted to be a discussion. We wanted to be a discussion more than a debate uh, from me. Uh, so, uh, so for, uh, so uh, you can type anything within the chat window. I mean, this is, uh, so uh, how I see it, we need to trick our brains. So we are tricking our brains, uh, we are tweaking our brains uh, to basically keep engaged in the training. Uh, so our brain needs to be in order to engage our brain, otherwise the, the brain is going everywhere all the, uh, all the time. Uh, but in this, but from the training, so for, uh, I mean, in general, in general, the goal of any training, the goal of any training is to uh, learn, you will learn not more than 50 or 60%. So goal of any training and in, on some statistics, it says that all the trainings will, any training will give you uh, 40 to 50% uh, knowledge. But here we are trying to use all the learning senses and trying to get actually 70, 80%. And uh, so if we use all these learning senses, guys, trust me, within interviews, you will remember the words that you have written as notes within your, uh, within your uh, notebook. So so this is uh, this is very very important so navid is saying listening and writing brings more concentration and focus excellent navid is also saying active listening uh, plays an important role every single word delivered uh, from uh, you is important for all of us excellent yes so every single word delivered from an instructor uh, is very, very important for all of us. Very good, very good, excellent guys. And we are seeing ourselves earning uh, a good, uh, uh, I mean, earning good at the end of this training once we are in the market and there is a value for this. There is a value for all of our efforts. Uh, so another thing that I've seen uh, that uh, the efforts, if efforts are uh, placed on negative things, we get negative things. If efforts are placed on positive thing, we get positive things. So it's just that what it, wherever we are putting in effort. So here we are putting in efforts today. And uh, it's okay, okay, enough with this. Uh, thank you for listening, everyone. And let's start taking notes. And uh, we need to have discussions as well. And we need to do the practical. So module one is about uh, module one is about understanding IP address. So today's module is very, very important. I'm going to go into more detail.
Second module with, will be about uh, automatic assigning automatic IP address. So DHCP means that how do you assign automatic IP address? So here I'm going to write automatic. IP address. So for now, I'm just going to type automatic IP address. DNS, there, there is a full chapter on understanding of DNS. This is all about, uh, this is all about name resolution. So, uh, so at this point, we are writing just one pointer for everything. So next time when we, uh, when we say, when we listen, I mean, when we hear the word DHCP, uh, and uh, so automatically, uh, so uh, a word comes, should come into our mind that DHCP is a service that assigns automatic IP address. So here, assign automatic IP address. And whenever next time we hear the word DNS, DNS is automatic, uh, it's a name resolution. It's a service that provides name resolution. So remote access and direct access will be the fourth uh, chapter. How do you access the computers remotely? How many ways uh, computers can be accessed remotely? Uh, module five is all about VPN. Uh, so if we are working from home, how can we make the connection secure? Uh, so what about, so why VPN? Because uh, if, we, if we are working from home, I'm accessing, connecting to my office from home. Now between connecting from home and the office, so this is office and on this side we have home, there are millions and millions of hackers sitting in between. There are millions of millions of hackers sitting in between here. Uh, so these hackers are always ready to hack into your session and hack into your organization. Uh, so uh, how can we make this all secure? So what we do, we use a service called VPN to encrypt our session. So this is like barred line. Uh, you, can li you can say that this is a line of control uh, between, uh, so between you and uh, so line, line of control connecting you to the office. And VPN stands for virtual private network. It's a virtual private network, but here for today's discussion, uh, for today's uh, understanding, just remember that it's an encrypted session between, uh, between you and the office or between point A and point B. And how encrypted is this? How protected is this? Uh, this, is so pro this is so much protected. VPN is so much protected that if, uh, if, if uh, uh, millions of hackers try to break into this. So you can think of this, they are trying to break into this line. Uh, they won't be able to break into this. Why? Because this is all encrypted. And, and uh, the, 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 uh, the everyday use example is uh, then we, when we connect from an ATM to bank. So uh, we are driving and we, uh, we pass by an ATM and we stop by an ATM and try to connect to ATM and try to get, make a transaction. So on ATM, we do make a transaction. Whenever we get money out of the bank, it's a transaction be happening. So uh, an ATM sitting middle of the road on the highway where there is no bank, how is this ATM connected to the bank? And uh, why, if ATM is connected to the bank, why people, people are not able to hack into that connection? Why? Because it is protected through VPN connections. So VPN makes it uh, encrypted. So this is so much encrypted and there are encryption keys, different type of encryption keys. So this chapter is all about that VPN connection, people connecting from home to office, number one. Uh, people connecting uh, from device one and device two where they need uh, security. So uh, banks are one example, hospitals are another example. On whatever site, on whatever site you see uh, HTTPS, uh, most of the, I mean, now, nowadays, wherever we log in, uh, we see HTTPS on, on the site. So if I can, if I can connect here, So here, uh, let's say we connect to, uh, this is a banking website. It can be a TD bank website or a Scotia bank website. 
So when you go to this website and when you see this HTTPS at the uh, starting with HTTPS, it means that this page is encrypted. If you don't see S at the end, it means that it's not encrypted. So sometimes hacking website would create an exact page like this. Uh, where they want you to enter your uh, ATM card number and your password, but it's not encrypted. If there is no S uh, to start with, it means that that page is not encrypted. And anything on this page, anything on this page can be uh, seen by uh, other people. And how can they see uh, this communication uh, by other people? Uh, they have tools. They have tools that can intercept the traffic between this page, between when I'm entering my ATM card and the password, and I'm connecting to the bank. So between this page and the bank, everything they can see. So always make sure that whenever you are on any secure site, so a Canada services site or hospital site or wherever you're logging in, make sure that it has S with this. S is basically, it represents that it has a certificate so if, I, if, if we can go in here, uh, so, so, so you can open a banking website. You can open a banking website on your computer, everyone, any banking website. Uh, uh, yes, Navid, uh, go ahead, please, question. Uh, then I read it in the uh, Active Directory training that um, uh, when Active Directory installed, then there are three layers of security. So in the same way, uh, this VPN, which is a virtual private network, is working on some layers? Uh, good question. Uh, so uh, in Active Directory works on three layers. Uh, yes, uh, the forest uh, domain, right? You're talking about those layers, right? Exactly right. Okay. So, uh, so, it, so VPN, so the word VPN is to encrypt communication. Just remember this. So this is communication. Remember that Active Directory, when we talk about Active Directory, it has a list of users and password and that, that list of users and password is protected by three layers of security. So it's, yes, so that's a, that security, which is information at rest is protected. But here uh, within VPN, uh, uh, with VPN, we are protecting the communication, the communication. Uh, so which means point A, and point B, when the information starts flowing from point A, from this page, it is now going to the bank. So that all in that all communication is encrypted. Meaning, uh, when when we start driving from your home uh, to maybe to your friend's house, all that all that route is encrypted. When uh, le let's say a president is traveling is dr is being uh, driven from the airport to his place or maybe to or to a parliament all that uh, all that road is encrypted so vpn does exactly that okay so uh, so this so next chapter will be about vpn and after that we will be uh, learning about implementing networking in branches so how we can so this is all about basically one branch and then we start expanding our knowledge and we we need to see that how networking is uh, configured between different branches uh, so how mississauga is connected to uh, toronto how toronto will be uh, connected to uh, uh, let's say uh, quebec or different cities and even throughout the world then configuring advanced networking will be module 7 and the last one is implementing software defined networking which is all this is all related to virtualization and cloud okay excellent so today we are starting with the planning ip uh, ipv uh, so ipv for addressing configuring an ipv host managing troubleshooting ipv network ipv4 is basically a word refers to an ip address so ip address that we every day we use uh, the other name of that ip address is ipv4 and i am going to go into basics in few moments here uh, so here I'm just going through introduction. So the first chapter is planning. How do we plan IPv4 addresses, uh, configuring an IPv4 host, managing and troubleshooting IPv net and network connectivity. Lesson one, we will be starting with, uh, uh, so lesson one, we will be starting uh, with welcome Klam, Ashish, no problem. Uh, excellent that you're getting interview calls. Uh, interviews are always uh, welcome and excellent. Very good. We, uh, so, uh, so no problem. So no problem. You, uh, you made it. 
so we have not started yet. So the one thing that I uh, that that uh, so a summary of everything that we have covered is uh, that we need to we need to use all of our learning senses. I, and I will keep on reminding everyone uh, because uh, it is very very important. Hearing, writing, discussion, doing. Hearing, writing, discussion, and doing. Uh, practical is everything is important from uh, so uh, on this. Uh, and attending a lecture is very, very important uh, as well. Uh, we never ever rely on a video. Never ever rely on the lecture video, although the lecture video is posted uh, at the end of the lecture or within one or two days, lecture video will be there. But guys, lecture video, you cannot have that uh, level of uh, concentration. Uh, yes, lecture video is important for reviewing. Uh, you're driving, you're any, uh, you're driving, and uh, to your workplace or driving where you have like uh, half an hour or one hour. Uh, so you can just uh, uh, listen to the recording uh, on a fast pace. Maybe not on a slow pace because you've already been through the lecture. But reviewing is good. So in this chapter, in this lesson, we will be working with IPv4 addressing, defining subnets, public, private, uh, a PIPA address. So a PIPA, this word is pronounced as a PIPA address. We will be going into more detail. What is this? And creating supernets and subnetting. Uh, so starting with the slide number one. Uh, uh, so dotted decimal not notation and number and da, 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 da. so so let's. Uh, let's jump onto our whiteboard and understand this right from the depth. So these, so there is a lot of information here, and we will come back to this as well. Uh, but we need to understand that on a very simple uh, level. Uh, I mean, simple level, or uh, we made we need to make it very very simple to understand. Okay, excellent. So what we need to do, everyone, starting with understanding IP address. Navid, you have a question. Your hand is raised. Sorry, somebody, I forgot to. No, no, yes, no. Uh, my apologies. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, so let's start. Uh, today's topic is everyone IP address. So today's topic is IP address. Now let's start with understanding IP address. So IP address so far what we know and so far what we have worked uh, with IP address, IP address is a, a unique number. It's a unique number assigned to any device. So all the devices uh, that needs to be on the network needs to have an IP address. Okay, all the people that are living in Canada needs to have a SIN number. Without a SIN number, you cannot uh, you cannot communicate. Uh, you cannot. I mean, you cannot be part of uh, you cannot be part of the tech system. So let's say that. Uh, so you cannot be part of the tech system until you don't have a SIN number. You cannot even start working. Yes, you can start working on cash, uh, but you have to have a SIN number. SIN number or the ID number. Uh, so in order to travel from one country to another, you need to have a passport number. So, this, so these numbers are important. These numbers are very, very important. And uh, <clears throat> so, so, the, so that's the same importance of SIN number uh, being a Canadian, uh, ID uh, passport number being a part of any country or ID uh, number for any, or, any country is very, very important. And employee ID for any, uh, so what is the main purpose of all of them is to identify that who we are talking to. So the main purpose of this unique number is to identify that which computer are we talking to. So here, the main purpose is identification. So this number represents number one, it's a unique number and it's our, it's the device identification. So it's a device
fits a device identification. Now, so that now we know that there has to be a unique number and it's a device identification. And how many examples do we know of? The examples are, the examples are uh, number one is uh, SIN number. Uh, number two is passport number. Number three is employee ID in any organization. And uh, number four is uh, telephone. Telephone. But, but one person can have many telephone numbers, right? So one person can have many telephone number, but, uh, but each number is unique. Each number is unique. If one person is using one telephone number, that telephone number uh, cannot be used by another other, other person throughout the world. That number has to be unique. So, and what does these all identify? These all are used for identification. So that's the second thing. Number three is that how do we control the use of IP address throughout the world? So, the, so now this is a big question that how can you control the use of IP address? Uh, so in, in the world, we need to control the use of IP address control the use and uh, so that all the devices are unique and how unique it should be how unique it should be so the ip address has to be unique throughout the world uh, which means that all the devices that communicate over the network needs an ip address so here i'm going to write that uh, so this is uh, so first of all we started with a unique number number one uh, number two it is used for identification number three we also know now the example uh, so why the importance of an IP address the, so this is how important as the SIN number or the passport number or the employee ID or the telephone number and next uh, what we are trying to understand it uh, we need to find out a technique that how can we control the use of IP address why do we need to uh, control the use of IP IP address, we need to control the use of IP address because any device on the network needs an IP address. So here, any device, any device on the network needs an IP address. Now, this is also important for uh, uh, re replying to interview questions as well. So any device on the network requires an IP address. And how many devices are there on the network? So how many devices? So what devices are we talking about? We are talking about starting from uh, laptops. Uh, sorry, uh, we are starting from, uh, starting from uh, the desktop computers, desktop. Desktop, remember the old type of computer where we have, where we used to have tower casing and then uh, we used to use a monitor and a keyboard. So this is old type of, uh, that old type of computer. And it is right here, actually. I can bring this picture. So this is a desktop computer. So this one is a desktop computer. And then going towards the laptops, all the laptops that are connecting, or the laptops that we use needs IP address. And then other than, uh, other than then, then laptops, of, the laptops and these computers are of many types. Uh, we use these computers in offices. So this, this is, uh, we use it in office. Uh, we also use it, they use the same at, at home. And the same goes for the laptops. We use these laptops uh, in the office. So we use these laptops in the office at home. Uh, in coffee shops, uh, where, where else, in, in hotels, in hospitals. Uh, so everywhere these laptops and computers are used, okay? And, uh, and then, uh, uh, so, uh, so yes, uh, Alamgir is saying servers, desktop, uh, laptops, cell phones, game boxes, yes. Uh, so, so every everything needs an IP address. So we have, uh, we have, so we have these desktops. We have these, uh, we have these. Uh, what do you call them? Laptops uh, all need IP addresses. Uh, then we have smartphones. So nowadays we have smartphones. Uh, 
a uh, long time back when the ip addressing was invented there was no use of smartphone so at that point there was not uh, uh, so there were phones there were phones but uh, so ip address was first time invented back in 90s uh, at the end of 80s actually uh, 1980s when the ip addresses or you can say uh, mid 70s uh, they were they started talking about ip addresses then they came up with this IP at IPv4 addresses. Then they came up with IPv4 addresses, IPv, uh, so IPv4 addresses at the end of around uh, to 1980s. And then by 1996, they came up with this strategy of uh, having this IP address. So IPv4 address. So you can see uh, our thinking is faster than our writing. So P V I P V four I P V four. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. One more time, guys. IP address is a unique number. Number one. Number two, it's used for identification. Number three, it is a world. Uh, how, so we need to find a way to control uh, control the use of IP address in the world or throughout the world. Uh, throughout the world, and then uh, so and uh, so the, this definition we need to understand. We uh, remember that all any device on the network, any device on the network needs an IP address. Uh, so there can be a trick question in interviews that uh, you know we have our network, uh, we have uh, installed our network in a clinic. Remember the clinic example that we did. So it's a small network. Everything is configured. Uh, Active Directory is there. DNS is there, uh, and uh, and but but uh, a computer is not able to communicate. The computer is not able to communicate over the network. And this is an interview question. A uh, computer is not able to communicate. Uh, so thinking they will give you a complete scenario. It's uh, the network is working. It was working from before. There is Active Directory. There is DNS. All the devices are connected. Failover cluster is connected and everything the uh, the laptop is powered in but still it is not connect it's, it's it's not working it's not logging in so what what can be the cause of computer not logging in so one of the things that you can ask that it might not have an ip address so if even if all the network is there and ip address is not there it means that this machine cannot communicate uh, over the network it cannot even connect to the domain controller why because it doesn't have an ip address so so, so the first thing that we need to understand any device that there is on the network needs to have an ip address and how many devices need Need an IP address. Uh, so uh, the desktops, laptops, smartphones, uh, smartphones. Why smartphone need an IP address? Because all the smartphones are connected to internet. So as long as you need internet services, you need an IP address. And other than that, then there are game boxes. So all the gaming uh, box nowadays, uh, they are also connected to networks, uh, which uh, includes PS4. That includes Xbox. And uh, and everything that needs an IP address. And other than these, what else need an IP address? So uh, very soon, very soon, all appliances will need an IP address. Very soon. So nowadays, it's it is seems that it, it is uh, it is seemed uh, seems as a luxury uh, that if your fridge has an IP address. But uh, but uh, very uh, very soon, it will be a very normal for everyone that a fridge will be, will. So there are fridge that has an IP address nowadays. Uh, so there are TV, all the TVs already have IP address. So the other thing that will require IP address uh, will be TV. TV already has an IP address without an IP, all the smart TVs that have that has IP address because they connect to internet and we use all these Android uh, applications on TV and we can connect to all these different internet channels as well. And uh, fridge, fridge, uh, fridge will have an IP address, uh, stoves have an IP address, and uh, so moving, so these are electronic devices that will have an IP address, but other than that, all of our furniture is going to have an IP address as well. So chairs, 
beds and everything will have an IP address. Yes, Alamgir, please ask a question. Yes, sir. Uh, like uh, I have, I'm a little bit confused here. Like if you have a like uh, internet at home, so when you are connected with the wi uh, Wi-Fi, so still every like uh, uh, thing uh, will get a different IP or uh, like a uh, home's address, like a uh, home IP address. Uh, yes. So at home, all devices have unique numbers, unique IP address. Every like uh, gadget will have a different number, right? Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, every gadget, every device will have a unique IP address. Though it's connected with one uh, Wi-Fi. They are connected with one Wi-Fi. Yes. Yes. And I am going there. I am going there. It's a very good question that how is it possible uh, to have so many of these IP addresses? So many of these IP addresses that yeah. are that e So even in one house, so I can say yeah. in, in one my house, person. yeah, in my house, there are uh, how many, uh, maybe 20 devices that are connected to. So all kids have uh, uh, two or three devices, a phone, a tablet and a laptop. Uh, so uh, three, and uh, and then there are like 20 different devices that are connected to internet and they all need IP addresses. So, so yes, so I'm going to come back to this question. Alamgir, it's a very good uh, question. And uh, so it's a, it's a prayer break in two minutes. So we'll go for a break in just two minutes here. Okay. So, so guys here, yeah, so, uh, so before going for a break, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's uh, uh, review whatever we have learned so far. So IP address and uh, we are going there. And this is very important information. This is very important information to understand. So here, starting with number one, uh, all IP addresses has to be unique, number one. Number two, IP addresses are used for identification. Number three, how many places this, uh, this type of identification is used? It's uh, used everywhere. It's used everywhere. And, uh, uh, and, and numbers are used for identification. Why names are not used for identification? Because you can have similar names. They can be, there are millions of Muhammads throughout the world. There are millions of Johns throughout the world. So, so that's why numbers are used. And number four, uh, we understood uh, that how uh, then we started discussing that how to control the use of IP addresses throughout the world and uh, the definition the, uh, the, the, the requirement is that any device on the network needs to have an uh, on the network needs to have an IP address if the device loses an IP address you, that device won't be able to connect and how many devices are there there are now billions of devices not millions of devices billions of devices and those devices include a desktop, they include uh, a laptop, and they include uh, smartphones, gaming box, and then TV and fridge and stove and chairs and beds and everything will have an IP address because they all need to communicate over the network. Let's go for a 10 minutes break everyone and right after the break we will continue with our interesting uh, discussion and learning. Hello, Adnan, Mai. Uh, yes, I'm here. Uh, it's Ashish, how are you? Very good. How are you, Ashish? Not bad, but well, a bit better, I guess. I kind of got a eye infection, man. I actually forgot to tell you. That's why I... Oh, the, really? Uh, wow. Yeah. That's why I wasn't able to do the labs and stuff either. But um, so I got this call uh, right now from this guy, right? Mm -hmm. um, will we be able to talk about it after class if possible, actually? Yeah, sure. If you want to talk about this now, people are yeah. in break, we can. Or if you want to talk later, it's, it's yeah, yeah. up to you. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, I'm just going to forward you uh, on the uh, WhatsApp, right? Okay. Okay, sure. Uh, sure. The thing. Uh, just one second. So, um, list in uh, 35 per curry with you, right? Okay. Salki, but um, so he's like, uh, Abhi, aap kya kar rahe ho? and uh, this and that. I'm like, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm 
Mm-hmm. Um, I have uh, basically all these technologies and all that stuff. Um, I'll, I'll uh, send you a little upgraded copy of the resume as well, if you could uh, have a look. Okay, sure. Right. Um, the other question, I just did the VOIP and stuff like that. I added, and uh, you know, that little contract that's for CTA. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did, but uh, he did the, the call with me right now, but uh, he said he's going to call me back tomorrow again uh, mm-hmm. to understand a little bit more, right? So he's like, um, you know, for full time, uh, what would you prefer, right? I'm like, um, even 35, uh, you know, would be okay, I guess, right? Um, yeah, to start with, it's not bad to start with. It's it's right. it, it's uh, it's on the low side, but to start. Yeah, with, I mean, our certifications are any. Mere paas ki usko bol do, right? Usne poocha tha mere se, to maine usse ye bola ki, you know, uh, abhi main school mein hi hoon. So he started asking, right? When did you do the net plus? I'm like, oh, I'm currently in school, uh, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm going for the cloud as well. So just on that note as well, now, by how many classes of the cloud have gone by? How many classes are left till the cloud training? Yeah. Uh, so five weeks of this and five weeks for the last, and then we'll start with the cloud training. Yeah. Oh, no, uh, I'm asking for the current one that you are in. I'm, I'm, I'm... Oh, that one. So we are yeah. starting a new training. So uh, from this, uh, from the from coming Friday evening, we're right. starting a new cloud cloud training. So we finished one and we're starting the second one. Azure, I think so Azure is what you were doing, right? So Azure is finished. We're starting with okay. AWS. Okay, so can I enroll in that class as well, please? Because I mean, I, I you know, uh, again, at the end of the day, you know, yeah, I'm in this class and everything, ma'am, but. Uh, you know, sure, I mean, myself. sure. If you, if you are able to kind of uh, uh, take both of the trainings and complete all the labs and everything, then yeah, sure, yeah. you can do it. Yeah, man, but you know, I'm always on top of my things, you know. As a matter of fact, you should hire me as a TA, man. I'm an official <laughs> TA for you, you know that, right? Right, right. So, so, but, so uh, one thing, uh, Ashish, that I want to say about this one technical support yeah. role for 35,000, this is this is really on the low side, and you know, I'm 35 for an hour, bola na, usse. Okay, okay. Right. No, but but this is this is full time with thirty five K per year. And yeah, yeah. You... but he asked me per hour, right? Okay, four, four per hour. Me, right? yeah. so, so if it is 32 per hour, that is a lot more than 30, 35 per year, right? Yeah, yeah, man. I'm not, I'm not going to sell for 35, man. That's, 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 okay. that's, no, 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 you know, but, but the thing yeah. is, uh, the things that they've written here are very good. So even if they hire you on this pay, uh, that right. will be, that will be excellent for you as an experience. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so they have mentioned here, uh, vSphere, Hyper-V and experience exposure and everything. So yeah. after this, uh, after today's call, uh, we will talk about that, how to present yourself. So yes, please. yeah, when you present yourself, never ever mention that you're in school, number one, because when you say okay. you're, you're, you're in school, uh, they already start talking to you uh, on a different, uh, I mean, on in, in a... Oh, no, a... no. I told him that I'm basically upgrading myself right now and right, I want right. to do the new uh, Google Cloud, essentially. Okay, right? okay, okay. So that's why yeah, I was like... Not even that. Not even not even that. Not even that. Not even that. No. Okay. So you are an IT professional and you right. are working, but at the moment uh, you just finish your contract and you need to improve your, and you're, you're changing this organization, even you're still working. You just, right, right. you're interested in changing this, uh, uh, this company because the contract is finished and you're not learning anything. So just for the sake of learning, you're changing to another organization. That's right. So, yeah. Okay. And, uh, and so the, the, the technologies they've mentioned here are, uh, are ve- will be very good for your experience. And uh, so at the end of this lecture, we'll talk about this. And also share with me your resume, please. Yes, I am uh, doing that right now. Uh, 
Uh, can I share it on the uh, WhatsApp as well? Yeah. Uh, oh, right here. Did I add the? Oh, no. right so you have eye infection in both or on on one side? Just the one, Adan. By actually, um, so my I, 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 while I was studying, right? So I booked my exam for the nine. So for like three days continuously, either I was in front of the computer screen or in front of the iPad screen studying the questions or playing yeah, a okay. game on my phone. You know, so the eye just overnight it just like swelled up like a freaking little lemon, man. And uh, I was all like <laughs> red and stuff. I'm like, oh my god, what the hell happened? Oh, man? okay. So yeah, man, it was, uh, it was fun. But uh, it's just gone now, so I can play. It's getting better. Right. And I'm like, I just sent it over. So okay. Okay, it. excellent. So he was just literally asking me about um, PBX, uh, I guess, which is the VOIP system, right? So um, also, Nanbai, I was wondering, can you, uh, do you have any migration documents that I could look over so I can seem a little bit smart <laughs> tomorrow? Uh, it's about migration. Uh, did, did he mention anything about my migration? Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, the last uh, job that I have over there at Storm Technologies uh -huh. is from uh, one of the friends, right? So um, basically, that's what he was uh, really inquiring about. So he's like, yeah, we are basically like these guys and that's what we do. Uh -huh. uh, um, you know, right. Okay, so I will share with you uh, the migration uh, quick migration technique. So migration is, I mean, it's a huge topic. Uh, right. So when you need to focus on migration from uh, 2008 to 2016. So that's yeah. what your uh, experience is that that, that I, I would suggest that you should mention that that you were involved in migration with the team uh, migrating servers from I said 2012 to 2016, actually. Okay, that's uh, fine. That That is fine. fine. <laughs> yeah, okay. That is fine as well. Uh, but 2008 to 2016 makes more sense because companies don't move from uh, from the you know uh, the recent uh, the recent version to a newer version. So most right, of the right, companies right. will move from uh, 2008 to 2016 and 2012 right. to 2019. So companies won't move right. to 2016. Right, right. So okay. for that, for that, I will share with you some documentation and also. And uh, when talking if about you could send me the one for the cloud as well, please. Uh, I mean, I have a little basic understanding of the cloud as well. So if I could look over that, right, it would kind of be um, nice. You know, the problem with that, I mean, uh, I will try to look into that, but that documentation is huge, huge, huge doc documentation. But that's uh, fine, Alan, but I have nothing better to do than better myself right now. No, it's not. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> you know, I'm literally, it's not. I'm, I'm, when I tell you, no, I'm no, like no, no, no. here in front of the computer, like think about it, I got an eye infection staring at the screen. So I'm, I'm right, here, right. you know, literally. No, no, like, no, it's not about, it's, yeah. it's not about the time. It's about yeah. uh, the understanding of concepts and everything. But still, I will, right. I will share with you something. Yeah, if you could. Uh, see. Okay, so, 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 okay, no problem. So, uh, Anand, by when, uh, this Friday, right, it's starting the AWS? This Friday evening, we're starting, uh, okay. actually, we are reviewing uh, Azure, uh, okay. all that, we're reviewing Azure, and we'll be working on some labs as well, probably on Saturday evening, we'll start on AWS. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, can I start with Azure and then whenever, whenever you do Azure again, uh, can I take that class? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you have to take the Azure class. At the oh, yeah, for sure, time. for sure. That's what I'm saying. When basically when uh, this class comes to Azure, because that's the first one you're going to teach, right? Yes, yes. Right. So that's when I'll take the Azure, right? But again, again, you know, not my, yeah, I'm in the class, but, you know, it's again, like, you know, I have to take care of my pills, right? So for sure. Uh, yeah. Right? Okay. No problem. Perfect. So at the end of this lecture, we'll we'll talk talk about this more. So so everyone, break is finished. I hope everyone is back. Please type yes in the chat window if you're available. So we have Naveed is back, Wasim is back, and Salim is here. Asher is here too. 
uh, please type yes in the chat window, everyone. Today's topic is very, very important and it's important for the job market as well. So I need uh, your full attention on this for the next uh, one or two hours. So Naveed, Vaseem, Salim, Asher, and uh, Alam Gir and Ashish is already here. Uh, so Alam Gir is left. Okay. Very good. So guys, uh, just before the break, we started talking about IP addresses. I'm starting, uh, as you can see that I've started slow on this, very, very slow for, so that everyone can understand the importance of IP address. IP address is, uh, it's a unique address. It's a unique number that is assigned to all of the devices. Uh, number one, number two, it is used for identification of a computer. Uh, the examples are that we use a SIN number in, uh, in, in Canada, passport number for throughout the world. Uh, and passport number is unique for everyone throughout the world and then employee employee ID used in organizations telephone numbers are unique throughout the world as well uh, so these numbers needs to be unique and IP address needs to be unique as well uh, and then we also learned that this new this, this definition this understanding of IP address that uh, any device on the network needs to have an IP address uh, and uh, how many devices are there the devices are we used uh, we use uh, desktops are connected laptops are mostly connected smartphones are connected gaming box are connected and nowadays appliances even are connected to uh, will be connected to the network okay so now let's start with ip addressing so now that we know what is uh, so what is the importance of ip address the next thing starting is uh, addressing so if we talk about address in the real uh, in the real life so there are two types of address a physical address and a logical address So physical address and a logical address. Uh, in real life, uh, we can uh, we can basically uh, we can basically in real life as an example of physical address and, and logical address is that physical address is your home address, the physical home address. Uh, so physical home address meaning uh, that uh, which city are you in so mostly uh, which city are you in and logical address is actually uh, the address that we use in 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 the postage uh, so for example here we have um, uh, we can say this is uh, this is uh, 80 Dixie Road 80 Dixie Road and uh, we can say this is Mississauga And and the and the you know the uh, the, the the zip code. Um, so here, so whoever has this address cannot miss this place. Whoever has this address cannot miss this place. So this is a logical address. You can put it in the map, and then you can uh, you can you can so wherever you are in the world, you can ask about this address. You cannot miss it, and you will directly be there. Whereas physical address is a dif is is difficult to explain. Physical address, if you if if you don't have this address in the books and you just want to explain somebody's physical address where physically you are available the physical address of the same house a physical address of the same house without this without this name uh, will be very very difficult to reach so but physical address has uh, will be unique as well physical address will be the same as this uh, let's say uh, it's a new lot and the new uh, uh, new homes are being built uh, so that will be a physical address of that house uh, so, but if you want to give somebody physical address and want them and expect them that they will they, they will be there uh, on time, then that will take more efforts because then you'll have to be continuously on the phone and telling them, you know, you need to take right and then you need to take left. And if they miss some inter some intersection, then they, you need to ask them, you know, you need to come back and then try right and then go straight and all that. So that is that is known as physical address but logical address is that once a real address is assigned to a place then nobody can miss it then you don't have to spend uh, you don't have to uh, uh, ha you, you don't have to apply efforts uh, more efforts to reach to a location nowadays it's even more uh, it's even more easier uh, so in so exactly in the same sense all the devices on the network 
have two types of address, physical address and a logical address. Physical address is known as a MAC address. So this is a MAC address and MAC address is a, a 28 bit address. So MAC address for a device uh, will be a unique number that is assigned to a device. Uh, so it will be something like uh, AA-10 uh, eight nine uh, six uh, sixteen and so on. So it will be it will be separated with dashes and that is known as a physical address of any device. Whereas IP address is considered as a IP address is considered as a logical address. So IP address is considered as a logical address, uh, which will be in the form of four, uh, four numbers uh, uh, separated by a dot sign. So it can be 192, 168, uh, 10.0. So this is a logical address of, a, of any device, but all the devices that are connected over the network, they all have physical address. And if we can, if we can try to find that here, if we can try to find that on our computer, on our computer, you can type you can open a command prompt and within a command prompt, just type the word IP config. IP config, this is a command that we already know. And if we run this command, this command will show us that how many network cards are connected here. So essentially right here, uh, if we can go to, uh, so this is IPv4 address right here. So this one, uh, but here it's not showing us the physical address. So if I just need to see a physical address, what I can do, I can say IP config slash all. So IP config slash all, uh, will give you so why I'm writing IP config slash all because here it's just giving me the IP address, subnet mask, and the default gateway, and it's not giving anything else. It's it is not giving anything else, but I so that's why I'm saying IP config slash all. So you can write these two commands down. One is IP config just to see simple IP address, but IP config slash all will give you more information about about your networking, about your IP address. So if I say this. If I click on this, then it gives us more information. And if I can go check, so basically, why is it giving me so much information? Uh, because, uh, because, because of VMware, on all our networks, we have a normal ethernet card. This is the normal network card. And then there is a wireless card. This is the Wi-Fi card. And then uh, going down, these are, these are all different adopters, but this information is basically the same. So this is adopter number one. Adopter is that uh, small device with which we are connected to. Now here, uh, so, uh, so for now, I mean, you can ignore all the information here, but here just keep, just, just look at this as physical address. So for example, if I go here, and uh, this is known as physical address. So physical address, uh, so all the devices that we use on the network has a physical address. Our smartphone has a physical address. Our, so wherever the device, if the device has a physical address, then it can get an IP address. Exactly in the same uh, way that if you have a house, physical house or physical office or physical uh, place that can have a logical address that can have an address that is assigned to it. Uh, but uh, so exactly in the same way that all of the devices that are on the internet that needs to connect has a physical address. And this physical address is uh, exactly like this. So this is two, four, six, eight, ten. Uh, 12. So these are 12 numbers with separated by hyphen. Uh, now, most of the time physical address, we don't worry about the physical address because it is assigned and it cannot be changed. So physical address once assigned cannot be changed. It will remain the same for all the devices. So if the physical address is assigned to your smartphone, that will always be the same. It cannot be changed. And who assigns this physical address? This physical address is assigned by the manufacturer. Uh, so if your phone is from Samsung and the network card inside the Samsung phone is from IBM, so that physical address will be assigned by IBM. So, so I mean, uh, in a nutshell, we don't worry about the physical address, but we need to know, but we need to understand that there is a physical address, which is known as a MAC address. And how much information do we need to know about the MAC address? So on the second card, there is also a physical address. And you can see that this address is different from this address. So here, the first three is the same but the second three is different so 005056 so here 005056 uh, is the 
same, but the next one is difficult. C00001, this is C00008. And if, if I go down here, this the physical address on this adopter is completely different. So here, even the first three uh, digits are different as well, and the last three are different. Now in physical address, the only thing we need to remember about that the first three letters, the first three numbers are they they actually uh, they uh, they so these numbers indicate the manufacturer and the last three number indicate the device uh, device itself so uh, so which means that here you can see uh, that on this adopter since this is ethernet adopter this is that physical network card on my laptop uh, and this is from VMware. So this is because of VMware. You all have VMware workstation. So you should be able to see uh, the same VMware adopter in your computer as well. Guys, uh, please run this command in your command prompt. Open a command prompt on your laptop and then run ipconfig slash all. And then uh, ipconfig slash all and then copy this, uh, copy your MAC address. So this physical address is normally known as a MAC address. Copy your MAC address in the chat window. So uh, let's take uh, one minute for this exercise. Uh, open IPB config and uh, sorry, open command prompt and type the command IPB uh, IP config slash all. So, so this command is right here on the screen. So this is the command. So IP config will give you only the IP address, but IP config slash all, which is this command, uh, will give you uh, the will give you all all your IP details. And you 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 don't need to uh, go for all the MAC addresses. Just uh, copy one MAC address and 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 paste uh, in the chat window. So how do you paste? How do you paste? Normally, what happens is uh, that uh, you cannot paste. Uh, so uh, you cannot. So if, if uh, so here, if I if I uh, select this, how do you select this number one? You can you can select this in in this manner in the command window. In the command window, you need to go to edit, and within the edit, you need to click first mark. So you need to click first mark. Once you mark it, then you can if you once you select it, you just need to press enter on this. So once you press enter, it is copied, and then you can paste that just normal like paste uh, in the chat window so it is pasted in your chat window so uh, why so so physical address is uh, basically assigned to all of the so number one what do we need to know about physical address Physi all devices have physical addresses number one who assigned them they are assigned from uh, they are Okay, so Naveed is saying that copy paste is working normally. It's fine. If it is, it works normally, that is excellent. Uh, and Alamgir is saying, so every device that connects to the internet has two addresses, one physical address and one logical address. Yes. So all devices on the internet, they have two addresses, one physical and one uh, logical. And the way you can remember physical and logical is exactly your physical location and your address, the, your real address in the books. <clears throat> Okay. 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 So now that we understand physical address and and logical address, so here. In the meantime, please try uh, try to copy this uh, I, IPv6. Uh, sorry, uh, the MAC address on the screen. So Alamgir has provided the MAC address. So, sir, sir, I have a question. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, maybe I'm asking a bit earlier. If I'm asking a bit earlier, then you can tell me to. You will got. You gotta explain it. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, in my in my job, most of the time when I swap the device, right, like mm -hmm. self checkout system, right. Uh, right. It, it's it's uh, Linux based, mm -hmm. and what happened is when I swap the whole system. I have to give them a MAC address, right? Uh, of the new device and the old device. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what they do is, I think they, they, they update the MAC address and then devices start working. Okay. So my question is, uh, 
in every scenario where we swap the devices in IT industry, do we have to give the MAC address or do we have to change the MAC address while replacing the devices? Or it's just like a, in different cases and scenario it happens? Yes. So, so yes, whenever you have a new device, it will have a new physical address. So it, it has its mm -hmm. own MAC address. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, so that depends on the system. Most of the mm -hmm. system will automatically understand it's a new device and it will be a new MAC address. So most of the system mm -hmm. will understand, but some systems you'll have to, you, you, some system you will have to uh, basically Absolutely. configure the MAC system again. And what is the system where, where you have to give them the MAC address again? I mean, uh, what type of system is this? It's just a automation system or something? It's, it's a whole self checkout machine. Okay, it's a POS. And it's, point of yeah, sales. it's a POS, and it, it's a Windows based and uh, Unix based. Right, 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 right. Yeah, in that case, it requires a MAC address change. Why? Because in the back end application, they will have to enter that MAC address so that it can connect all the all the policies and everything to that mm -hmm. MAC address. For the, I think mm -hmm. mostly for the security reasons. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to understand. Thank. You. Okay. Very good. Sir, I have a question. Yes, please go ahead. Yes, sir. You said uh, like physical address should have a like a twenty-eight bits, right? Yes. F physical address is, uh, I think, twenty-eight bit. Yes. So, how many bits are there on this one? In this address? Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, the address that you are seeing. Okay, hold yes. on, hold on. Hold on. So I said it shows me twelve numbers, right? Yeah, these are twelve numbers. Hold on. So Mac Mac address forty eight bit address. Sorry, that's forty eight bit address. So it's uh so twelve times four. Sorry? Because uh shows uh, like uh, yeah so if you're looking at the screen all the mac addresses are exactly the same and mac address is 48 bit address and uh, and the first three numbers assigned first three numbers are for the manufacturer and the last three numbers are for the device itself oh, okay Okay, and this is, I mean, I'm not spending more time on this because uh, uh, MAC address we cannot change, but we need to have this level of understanding. Okay, yeah. so actually I'm trying to find the notes for this, but I'm going to use this document now. Uh, so here, uh, let me just quickly save this. Okay, so here, uh, uh, this is 70-741, and today is day one. So the exam we are preparing for, the exam that you need to go for is, will be 70-741 uh, and today's topic is implementing IP addressing. So, it's a unique number, number one. Used for identification over the network. All devices must have an IP address. Examples. Seventy 
same number in Canada. So this is a tax number. Uh, this is in states, there must be a number as well. Uh, in Australia, it's different. Uh, and uh, passport number. Employee number and telephone number. Then how many devices needs an IP address? So we have uh, computers. Computers have uh, desktops, laptops, servers, and we have um, gaming gaming devices and gaming devices are of all types uh, there are handy games there are uh, you, you know ps4 ps uh, xbox and then there are smartphone games and everything so smartphones requires and nowadays appliances In future, it will be uh, IP addresses will be assigned to furniture, and uh, and etc. and etc. So so we started understanding what is an IP address. Addresses are of two types. Physical address and a logical address. Example. physical location of the house and logical address. The assigned address in the books and papers. So in so in IP address, physical address is in uh, in devices on network devices, physical address is known as a MAC address. And MAC address, uh, about the MAC address, we just need to remember it's a 48-bit address. And, and what we can do is we can take this. Uh, So here's a quick definition of MAC address. Can we troubleshoot a MAC address? We cannot. 
we cannot so most of the time if the device is not working uh, the mac address uh, that you need to replace the device and w what devices you need to replace you need to replace the network card if you replace the network card then that there will be a new mac address so there is not much of uh, maintenance and troubleshooting in mac address mac address is a physical address uh, this is exactly like a physical house a physical house can you move a physical house from one place to another it's i mean it's uh, it's not possible if the even if the house is moved from one place to another it will be another physical address right so that that will be another physical location so exactly in the same manner we have a mac address is there, there is nothing much in mac address but we need to remember that for our networking understanding that mac address exist mac address is a 48 bit address and it is uh, so how do you see a mac address and here we need to know the command Anamari. yes so if any uh, device, I mean, let's say an example of a network card. If the network card is not showing the MAC address in uh, this IP config, so it mm -hmm. means that the network card is not working, we need to replace it. If, uh, if on a network card, I, MAC address is not showing, it means that it's not a network card, it's something, it's something else, some, some other logical device. So do you have, when you run ipconfig slash all, it's not showing MAC address on something? Right. And can you share a screenshot on the- No, no, well, uh, no, well I, I'm asking that, um, uh, can we find out, it's a kind of troubleshooting say, which I want to find out that if there is a network card, mm -hmm. and um, or, or there is a LAN card, you can see. Right. Um, so if, uh, that uh, MAC address for that LAN card is not coming up. So does it mean that uh, that card is not working? No, no. Uh, no, okay. Uh, MAC address will always uh, be there. Uh, but let's say, yeah, if, if you write, if you type ipconfig slash all and you're not able to see anything and uh, on the, I mean, it's not returning anything. It means that the card is defected. Card is, card is not working. Sir, I have a uh, okay. question related to this. Yes, please go ahead. Yes, sir. If there is uh, no physical uh, ad uh, address, like uh, mm -hmm. so, still the IP address will work. If there is no physical address, uh, MAC address on the device, it will not work. Ah. No. Oh, it won't work. Okay. Yes. It won't work. Sir, yes, please. Go I ahead. have a question, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, MAC address means media access control. So, what does it mean, media access control, sir? Media access control. They just named it. They just named it uh, as media access control, and in short, we know it as MAC address. Okay. Okay, but uh, I mean. So, uh, so I've worked with MAC address for long, 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 long time. Uh, I've never, uh, I mean, I've never seen a definition. I've, I've never, uh, I mean, we normally we use it as MAC address. So when we talk yeah. to each other, we say, you know, have you seen your MAC address? Check your MAC address. Is the MAC address same? Uh, just type IP config. So, I mean, uh, I mean even this this word looks strange to me is that strange that I've, we 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 never know it as media access control that's why sir i'm asking access. yes that's why i'm asking that word, media means like all the media related things they are controlling uh, they just named it no it's not it's not that only the media uh, media access control it, nowadays mac address is on all the devices just like i'm saying so maybe they refers to media as anything that is connected on the network. But nowadays, media definition is different, right? Media right. is anything uh, that is a part of the social media and this and that. Uh, but they named it, and and you can think of this. It's been it's it it was defined in 1970s. So MAC address is right uh, is is being used from that time. Okay. Right. 
Okay, so everyone, uh, so addresses are of two types. Number one, physical address and a logical address. We are going slow and uh, but steadily. We are, we are moving slow and uh, but so but this all in this this all understanding is required. Okay, so address is of two types: physical address and a logical address. And uh, physical address as uh, a physical address of the so uh, comparing this to the real life environment, physical address is. Uh, physical address is the physical place and the logical address is the sign that is in the books and exactly in the same manner all the devices have mac address which is a 48 bit mac address and the ad address is something like this which is uh, which is uh, basically divided by hyphens and ip address is is uh, uh, is an ip address like this okay so on this next slide we now we start working understanding on ip addresses so ip addresses and let me just copy this. So IP address, the logical address that we talk about is of two types. So IP address. So first of all here, I'm going to say address. Uh, physical address. Logical address. Guys, what are we learning today? Today's topic is IP address. So addresses of two types, physical address and, and uh, logical address. And physical address is known as a MAC address. And uh, so MAC address, uh, that's about it. And then logical address is, uh, logical address is basically, uh, is of two types. Number one is known as IPv4. And number two is known as IPv6. So two types of addresses. And then IPv4 is of two types, private and public. Private address, private IP address, and a public IP address. So just a second here. Uh, just a second, guys. Something wrong with the mouse. I have to just reconnect it. Just a second here. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so IP addresses of two types, number one IPv4 and IPv6, and there is something called private and public IP address. Now private IP address, uh, so first of all, IP stands for, IP stands for internet protocol. So IP stands for is equal to internet protocol. That's what, internet protocol and then IP address is of 32 bit address. So we are talking about IPv4 at the moment. We're not talking about IPv6. So IPv4 is of two types, private IP address and a public IP address. And then IP address is of uh, now 32 bit address, number one. And number two is that it has four octets. And I'm, I'm going to explain that all. It has two, four octet, and in each octet, there can be a number from 0 to 255. So each octet will not have any number more than 255. So what is an octet? Octet is that one box that is divided by a dot sign. 
So uh, remember that we can all assign an IP address and it has four numbers. So in the box, we can have, let's say 10, uh, zero, uh, one, and here we can say 10. So each IP address is made up of this and each octet is of uh, eight bits. So here, from here, it is known as eight bits. So this is made up of eight bits. Eight bits and eight bits. So this makes up 32 bit address. So this is eight into four is 32. So first of all, IP address, IPv4 address is of two types. Number one, private address and public address. Number two is uh, IP stands for internet protocol and it is a 32 bit address and uh, it has four octets. So I, 32 bit address is made up of four octets. I mean, you can say four boxes, but in technical language, it is known as four octet. So four octet is, uh, four octet is uh, four, four boxes and each box is of eight bits. So eight bit makes up uh, one, uh, one octet. So then it, it is all of 32 bit address. And in each box, you can have a number between zero and 255. So which means uh, that each octet can have a number between 255. It cannot have 256 as a number. It cannot have 300 as a number. It cannot have 400 as a number. So this box cannot have more than a number that is uh, 255. So this will be always either zero or 255 or any number in between. Uh, now, the second thing that we need to understand is uh, that uh, that there are uh, there are different uh, so first of all uh, here we need to understand what is the meaning of bits here so when we say it's a it's a 32 bit address what is the meaning of 32 bit address now 32 bit address meaning it it goes back it goes right back uh, to our disk uh, discussion long time back that, i mean a uh, few weeks back when we started understanding a disk on a disk how the data is stored how the data is uh, how the data communicates between one uh, one device to another that it's so the the data in the computer is all represented by bits so it is all about bits and bit can have a value of zero and one. Uh, so one and zero or zero and one in each bit, you can have zero and one. And why do we, why can we only have a bit value of zero or one? Anyone? So the question yes, is because of, yes. uh, sorry, uh, because of binary something, uh, because of, because of it's a binary language, so that is one. Binary language, yes. Yes, it's a binary the language. The computer is built on the binary language, that's why. It, it is, uh, can you repeat that please? The whole computer system is built on binary number, that's why. Yes, and why is it just on binary, but why it can be, why it cannot be decimal or hexadecimal? Uh, because guys, remember, and- uh, What is power and zero is no power? Yes, power of zero or one power, but uh, you're you're very close to that, Ashish. But what what is the meaning of power zero and one? So basically, one is uh, electricity. I don't know if anybody knows about like and or not gates, but basically that's what it is, right? Like one it, uh, represents power and zero represents no, right? Like or one is yeah. okay, electricity so two and zero is no electricity, right? Yes, so you're very close. Uh, electricity, if they, if it is zero, it means that there is no electricity. If one, there is electricity, right? But uh, if we go back um, and to analog and digital signals, so computers are all based on digital signal, low current and high current, low current and high current. Remember that we discussed a uh, 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 long time back, but it's, it, I mean, uh, uh, so, uh, so the question is, what is the meaning of zero and one? Zero means uh, that it's a low current and one means it's a high current and high current and low current and high current and low current. And this is how uh, in the computer data is all stored. So on the laptop, when we, so I'm moving this mouse, basically these all instructions are going to the CPU in the form of 
high current and low current and uh, uh, so this is uh, this is uh, i mean uh, it's it's regulated in a sense that uh, these uh, there are millions of ones and zeros are being sent to the cpu and cpu is processing them okay so this is so we are we start we so why we are here we are we want to understand what is a bit value so ip ipv4 address is made up of uh, 32 bits so which means that in each bit there will be zeros or one so 32 bit meaning is that each octet is of eight bits so complete ip address complete ipv4 address is of 32 bits and uh, 32 bits and each bit is of uh, eight bits so eight bits if i can say uh, that the, there is so there is one, two, and three. So each is eight bits. So this is eight bits, this is eight bits, this is eight bits, and this will be eight bits. It means that there will be eight bit in each, in each octet. It means that in each octet there can be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bits in this, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in this, and maybe in the last we can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight bits. So it is all made up of a uh, 32 bit address. So that's why it is known as 32 bit address. Now this has all, uh, so we need to understand there is a meaning for all this. Okay, and bear with me on this. I know that this will be, uh, this will be, this, this, this seems to be a bit difficult to understand, but just bear with me uh, for the next half an hour and it will be very, very clear. Uh, okay, so going back to our logical address, logical address is uh, known as the IP address in computers, and IP addresses are of two types number one, IPv4 address, and number two is IPv6 address. And then IPv4 address is of two types, uh, actually, both addresses are of two types, private address address and a public address. So IP stands for internet protocol and it is of 32 bit address. It has four octets. Each octet can ha not have more than uh, more than uh, this number. Now the second thing that we need to understand. So we do understand it's a 32 bit address, which means that it can have each each octet has eight bits and there are four octets. So which means that eight into four is 32. So 32 bits. Now the next thing that we need to understand why we cannot have more than this value, why we can have have only 255 why we cannot have three uh, why we cannot have uh, a 300 value or 400 value so guys the reason is if the the so it since there are only uh, eight bits in each octet and two raised to the power eight if we go with two raised to the power eight that will give us a number of 256 that will give us a number of 256. Uh, so this all these all bits are uh, are translated into decimal number. Remember that uh, we don't remember our IP address as this. So if we had to remember all of our IP address in this, I think we cannot work with IP addresses. So in order to make this all simple, I mean, the, the first requirement for computer is computer only understands binary, binary language. So this is why we are talking in bits. If computer would have understand decimal language, then we don't need to talk in bits. And why, why what is the... Uh, what is the requirement of a computer? Why computer only understand bits? Because computer has computer runs on digital signal. And why computer runs on digital signal? Because a computer cannot run on analog signals. Remember the, the current, normal current flows in analog signals. So this is normal current. The normal current, which is we know as AC or DC power. So uh, which is, uh, so, so normal current is analog signal. And in analog signal, it's very difficult to measure the measure uh, the type of signal so this is why the normal signal is uh, is not used in computers in computers we use digital signal and why because digital signal is easier to manage so so you can see everything is related everything is related computers have cannot work on analog signal so the first time when computers were invented we uh, we came up with uh, the, the 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 scientists came up with digital signal number one why they came up with digital signal because they needed to measure it they need to see which signal is coming in and based on the signal they can they can uh, take action so my mouse is moving this is all because of digital signal and you can see that it's not slow it's not slow because the cpus are very very fast there are four cpus in i7 uh, computers and we had that discussion as well uh, so you can see that this 
mouse movement is going through millions of bits because millions of digital signal that is converted to zero ones and zeros. So going back to that, it's a digital signal. Number one, it is all converted to one and zero, and the IP address is made of made up of thirty two bits. And uh, thirty two bits meaning that in each octet there can be eight bits. So so in real IP address it will look like this. IP address will look like this one 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 zero 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 zero, and so now now the problem was that how can we remember the IP address if the IP address is written as this because this is computer only understand this and we understand human language. This is why they invented. The, they they invented this binary language conversion to decimal language, so which means that all these bits are converted into the de, uh, digit uh, into decimal language. So what is the difference between binary language and decimal language? So binary language has only two binary by meaning it has only two numbers of uh, zero or one, whereas decimal means that it has ten numbers. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this has this is known as decimal language, and just like that we have also called uh, we have hexadecimal language which has sixteen numbers. So hexadecimal will have after nine there is a b c d E and F, so there will be. Not by yesterday the chart uh, in the chat. Okay, okay, okay. So there is a chart that is shared. It's just downloading and. Oh opening. here, I, I just have the website actually. I guess that would be easier to pull up right. Right here, so this is this is a chart, and uh, so here we have decimal numbers, uh, which is uh, from one. To thirty zero to thirty one. I mean, all the numbers, and this is their conversion, uh, the binary value of each one of them. Then there is uh, the octal, and then there is octal like three numbers, hexadecimal, ASCII, and all. Okay, so that's good. Uh, thank you, Ashish. And uh, so, so guys, uh, I mean. Uh, not necessarily we need to understand uh, hexadecimal and other uh, uh, other technique but this is what we already know uh, so uh, so but hexadecimal i'll come back to hexadecimal cuz ipv6 is all based on hexadecimal so that in the chart that ashish uh, 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 shared so in this chart if we can see here there is this numbering hex hex numbering which is this one so as you can see this is 0010123456789 and after that it is a b c d e so that makes up the hexadecimal number and ipv6 is made up of hexadecimal and we will come back to that uh, in a moment uh, so guys uh, going back again ip address is of uh, I, so ip address is a logical address number one it is of two types ipv6 and ipv4 ipv6 ipv4 is of two types private address and public address so private address is the address that we use at home so private address will be the address that we use at home uh, on our wifi and public address is used on internet so on internet we use a uh, public ip address and we we uh, i'll come back to uh, that in a moment uh, so uh, so ip address ip stands for internet protocol it is of 32 bit address it has four octets meaning four numbers make up the ip address and in each number in each octet there cannot be a number more than 250 uh, 255 now so why this and there is a logic behind everything so the logic behind uh, why it cannot have more numbers because Two raised to the power eight is two fifty six, and since it starts from zero, this is why it ends up on two fifty five. If it if it would have been started from one, then they, then we can have two fifty six in IP address, but there is nothing within this. So this octet cannot have it can have zero between number between zero and two fifty five. So which means that each number. that is that we see as an ip address so in our labs and in our in in all of our labs we used an ip address of 192 168 uh, like 10.10.10 .10 .10. <clears throat> so we used a number like this 
But so we see as this IP address, but the computer sees as a binary IP address. So computer will convert that into binary and then can communicate between uh, between the two. Now, how do you convert from IP address uh, from 192 to 192 uh, to this? And this is very easy on our computer. We can open calculator. So I'm going to open a calculator, uh, just a normal uh, calculator. So this is a normal calculator. And uh, let's say, uh, how do we convert from 192 to a binary value? I can just say uh, 192 and then convert that to, so first of all, I need to change this to a scientific calculator. So this is a scientific one. And here I can type the word 192 and then convert that to binary value. So binary, where is it? Okay, and this is a newer type of calculator here. Uh, right here. So this is a binary value. So 192 is basically 11000000. So these are eight bits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here uh, we, I'm going to, can I copy this uh, from here? Yes, I can. I'll copy this to, so guys open a, open a calculator and type this, okay, I cannot copy this. What I will, I will write this. So here I can say 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 0. So this is 192 and I'm gonna bring the same for, I'm gonna bring the same uh, for the other one, which is, decimal, change to decimal and 168. And then it is 10, it is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1000. So here I'm gonna write here. So this is uh, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1000. And now, uh, so the rest of the two number we will convert by ourselves. So how do we, so we use the calculator to convert to this uh, number. So we as human, when we, when we speak about IP address, we, we remember IP address as this number, 192, 168. But when a computer talks about, when a computer talks about IP, uh, when co computer uh, talks, I uh, mean, connects two devices uh, together, it, it, uh, it connects to each other by using the binary number IP address. So the computer is uh, based on this. Now, uh, now in order to in order to understand this, uh, so from the slide, in order to understand this from the slide, here you can see that each uh, each bit has a value and each bit has a number. So let's say starting with here. So this is one octet, eight bit octet, and it has how many bits? Eight bits. Okay. So starting from bit zero and bit seven. So bit zero, one, two, three, and each bit has, it's a binary language. So it starts from two raised to the power zero is one, two raised to the power one is two, two raised to the power two is four, two raised to the power three is eight, two, two raised to the power four is 16, two raised to the power five is 32, two raised to the power six is 64, two raised to the power seven is 128. So guys, if, uh, I mean, if, if it is a bit overwhelming understanding mathematics, uh, so guys, just remember that this is, uh, this is the, the um, I mean, this will be the most mathematics, uh, this will be the most maths uh, type of uh, discussion or, uh, or things that we need to understand. You don't need to understand more than this. Uh, this is, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, after this, there won't, there won't 
be any mathematics. I don't like mathematics, but in computers, we studied uh, math one and math two. I don't know they, why they had to, in our degree program, why they had to, uh, uh, why we had to go through all that, because uh, that mathematics is not used. So don't be overwhelmed. Don't be, uh, uh, don't, don't, don't be panicked that now you do have to understand mathematics. No, this is uh, the most math we need to understand. So. First of all, and this is not difficult to understand, each bit has a value. Uh, and why do we need to go through this? Because guys, in the exam, there might be a question around uh, finding a subnet or finding a network. So you might have to do this bit, uh, the, the, uh, I mean, uh, this level of conversion, you might. Uh, otherwise, I mean, in exam, you know, you need to remember the technique and answers. But maybe there might be questions in 741 where you need to do this uh, basic calculation. So, okay, I'm going to move on to the next slide here. And now we will make a table that will give you a very basic, under I mean, uh, excellent understanding, a very simple understanding of converting between a decimal and a binary number. Okay, so decimal and a binary number. What are we understanding? IP address. So number one. IP address. And now what, what are we trying to understand? Conversion between, conversion between binary and decimal number. Conversion between binary and decimal number. And why do we need to convert? Because guys, uh, remember that uh, computer understands binary language. This is computer's language. And decimal is our language, humans. So we need to understand, uh, uh, we, we have decimal language. That this is why uh, we use IP addresses as 192, 168 and everything. And then uh, the, the computer understand that in uh, ones and zeros. Uh, so Ashar is asking, is this something we have, uh, we will have to apply on the job and just for understanding uh, what is going on in the background? Uh, it's a very good question, Ashar. Uh, uh, so what's happening, we don't need to apply this on the job. We don't, uh, never. Uh, most, uh, I mean, uh, this part will be done by the network engineers. Uh, so we won't be doing this uh, IP addressing. Uh, but this is for, why do we need to understand that this is for the exam purpose. So if you need, if you're going for 70-741, there will be some questions around this. And I think there will be a calculator as well. There will be, there is a calculator, if I remember correctly, uh, on the side. But in case if there is no calculator, then you need to do this calculation, uh, then you need to do this uh, on the paper. So they will provide you, they, they will, uh, I mean, they will allow you to do this uh, quick calculation on a piece of paper. But otherwise, you know, uh, if you have a chart like this, let's say if I type, if my IP address is 192, then we can convert that. But in this, there is no 192. Uh, but uh, so I'll give you a very simple technique that can help you understand this. So, so first of all, how do you make, you need to make a simple table. And uh, just bear with me for the next 10 minutes here. Uh, in, so in order to convert between binary number and decimal number, it's really easy to understand. So first of all, we will make eight, eight, eight squares. So the table that I'm gonna make, if you can understand this table, you can, you can convert any number, any binary number, any decimal number to a binary number, and you can do vice versa as well. So in order to make that table, we need to first make eight, uh, eight bits. So I'm gonna make eight bits, so which is starting from, so eight bits exactly in the same manner as we saw that in the slide. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now in this, we are going to uh, number them. So this is uh, starting from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, this starts from zero here from this side. So we don't need this. The last one. And now all we need to remember that uh, what is the binary language? How many digits are in binary language? Two digits. So I'm going to type here two. So I'm, I'm making this simple table so that we can understand. So two, you need to type two at the 
So here, two, 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 and two. And all we need to do, we need to find, we need to uh, put the power on. So in mathematics, we know if we need to put a power on uh, on some number, we type, we, we, we put it here, right here on the right side, top side of the number. So here I'm going to say this will be two days to the power zero, two days to the power one, two days to the power two, two days to the power three, two days to the power four and five and six and seven so now that we understand that we are our table is making like this so the first part was make eight squares and then type here zero to seven number and why we are typing because each octet is eight bits this is why uh, we are typing. Uh, we are we are writing this in eight bits okay and on the second line we just wrote two 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 eight times and then on top we type the same number the power of this and now all we need to do is to convert that power into a real number into a decimal number so two raised to the power uh, two raised to the power zero is considered as one and two raised to the power one is two two raised to the power two is four and this is eight this is 16 this is 32 this is 64 and this is 128 so uh, i mean this is just the the conversion of this two raised to the power is 128 two raised to the power six is 64 two raised to the power is 32 OK, so once you write this, this is now from here, conversion becomes really, really easy. So let's take the first number. So I want to convert 192 to a decimal number. So if I need to convert 192 to a decimal number, let me change the color here. So all I need to do is to see that where I can fit 192 in these numbers. So here I can say 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 4 is 4, but that is too low. So, so since this number is, is a big number, I'm going to start from this. So how many, uh, how much do I need to add to 128 that it can become 192? So uh, here, one nine, so starting from 128 plus 64, that becomes 192. So I'm going to use this. So definitely this bit will be used. And also this bit will be used. So, and if we are not, if I am not very good in maths, what I can do is I can just do a simple, uh, simple calculator and I can say 128 plus 64 is 192. Okay. So this means that only these two bits will be one and all other bits will be zero. So all other bits will be uh, zero. So zero and zero and zero. So this is this. Second number, I need to convert 168 into this. Now 168, how many bits? So first of all, 128 will be used because this is more than, this is, uh, this is the most, uh, this is the biggest number and it is less than this. So I'm gonna put this here. 168 and 160, 128, sorry, 128 plus 64 is 192, which is bigger than this. So I'm going to, so this number will not be used. Uh, let's add 128 to 132. So here again, I'm going to bring a small calculator here. So here, uh, so I can add 128 to uh, plus 32 with 160, which is this. So I don't need calculator and anymore. So which means 64 will not be used. It is zero. So what 32 will be used. So that makes it 160. And what else do I need? Eight more bits I need. So which means that 16 I don't need. I just need the number eight and rest will be zero. Okay, so, uh, so, I mean, this is how we can, uh, let's say if there is no calculator, then you can make a simple table like this, and then you can just put the number one under the bits that, uh, that makes up this number. So what is the next number is 10. So our IP address, so what are we converting? We are converting from the previous IP address 10.10. .10. So we will, I will put it here. So next number is 10. And we need to do two tens. So for 10, this bit will be used, 128. No, this will not be used. So I'm going to put zero on this. Do I, do I need to use this bit? No, this, so this will be zero. 32, no. 
16, no, 8. Yes, 8 can be used. So I'm going to use 8. And 4, can I use 4? No, it will make 12. So this will be 0. And in order to make 10, I just need 8 and 2, which makes this. And this is how I convert. And this next IP address is, the next number is 10 again. It will be the same number. So, so guys, if you can remember this, uh, uh, as I said in the beginning, this is all logical. I mean, if you can understand the logic, you will be able to understand this. So in order to convert from binary to decimal, uh, you might you might uh, need it to convert that for the exam purposes. In real life, there is no application for us as being a cloud admin or a system admin. So who are the people that needs this conversion? And nowadays, even network engineers, they don't need this, this type of conversion uh, because there are websites available. On these websites, you get complete subnetting. You, you get complete networking and sub, you just put in uh, your IP address and your requirement and it will give you a complete uh, design. So nowadays, but for the exam purpose, you might need to do that. So one more time, I'm gonna uh, go through this here. Uh, in order to convert from binary to decimal, there is, uh, you, need, you can do it from the calculator, number one, or you can just do it with the use of this simple table. So we, in order to make this table, we have, since we have eight bits, we made eight squares, number one. So one, two, three, eight squares. And then we wrote zero to seven number in this. So these are eight bits. And then what we did, since it is a binary language, then we typed, uh, then we uh, uh, wrote two under each square. And then we wrote the power of each square, which is basically the power uh, written in the bit. So two raised to the power zero, two raised to the power one. And then we converted this power into a decimal number. So two raised to the power one is two, two raised to the power two is four. So once this is all done, now it becomes our main table. And now you can convert any number into a decimal value. So all you need to do, the number that will be used to make this number uh, will be one and all of the rest of the numbers will be zero. Okay, so, so this, is, uh, this is one thing that we need to uh, understand uh, just on a conversion uh, level. Okay, now <clears throat> then, so this requires a bit of a practice. So guys, everyone, uh, please uh, uh, take two minutes and actually three minutes. Uh, so, uh, and, and make this table on a fresh page. So open a fresh page and make this table and make this table understanding, not just copying it from this whiteboard, just follow the logic. Just follow the logic and, and follow the four steps that I said. Number one, type on the top. So open a fresh page, everyone. And you need to take a picture and, and share with me on the WhatsApp. Uh, so just type, uh, just write eight bits and then make four squares. Step number one, write eight bits. And then thinking from your mind, not following from the whiteboard. Yes, you can look at the whiteboard. It's not a test, but I want you to store this logic in your mind. So make four eight boxes then in each box type number from zero to seven and then type two in the next line and then type the power and then convert that into this so just type uh, just make these uh, this simple table uh, you don't need to do the conversion at the moment i will give it to you as an assignment uh, but make this and uh, take two take four minutes and uh, do this and share a picture on a whatsapp So we are calculating what actually? Uh, 192 or 168 or? Uh... Uh, no, so you need to just make this first table in red, this table. You're, you're not converting okay. anything at the moment. So just please make this table out of logic. Uh, but if you have any confusion, just let me know. I can explain that again. So once done, just uh, uh, say done in the chat window. Just say done in the chat window that you're done.
Okay, excellent, Navid. Very good. So, Navid, if you're done, uh, can you just uh, explain the first four lines? I mean, in your own words, whatever you understand. Maybe in two minutes. Uh, first, yeah, like the first line, uh, there are uh, like uh, what I did is um, uh, like uh, it's for eight bit calculation, right? And uh, in and in the second line, I have eight boxes. And from the uh, right hand side, uh, the numbers in the boxes are zero, one, two, three, up to seven. Right. In the third line, uh, I have uh, uh, I have written down number two, uh, like eight times. Excellent. And it has the power starts from zero uh, uh -huh. up to goes to seven. So two power zero, two power one, uh, two raised to the power two, and it goes up to two raised to the power seven. Right. And after that, uh, what I did that uh, I multiplied number two with that power. So two times zero technically zero, but it is considered as number one. Uh -huh. And then uh, one, two, four, six, eight, uh, sorry, one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, and 128 at the end. Excellent, excellent, very good. It's not difficult to understand, right, everyone? Mm -hmm. So, so very good. Uh, so next thing that we need to understand, so this is about it. So uh, then now the next thing, going back to our uh, IP address. Uh, so IP address, uh, as we know of that we are discussing at the moment, there is IP address called, uh, so IP address is uh, IPv6. IPv6 is made up of four octets and I'm gonna write here now the IP address 192.168.10.10. Uh, .10. It can be 10.12 and all. Uh, so now the IP address is, uh, why, do we, uh, why do we have to follow this naming, uh, uh, th this numbers? Why do we have to follow these numbers? Now IP addresses, when first time they were introduced, they were first introduced in the, in the form of classes. So there are five classes, IP addresses are divided into five classes. Uh, so classes are, uh, so there is a class A address, class A, then there is a class B address, then class C address, and then we have, and then we have class D and class E. So IP addresses are divided into all these classes. Now, is it uh, somewhere uh, somewhat, so uh, in our, in real life, we have uh, like, uh, when, we, when you buy a plane ticket, there are classes too. There is that business class, and then there is that, uh, uh, there is that uh, uh, business class, and then there is some other class, and then there is economy class, and, and, and all these different classes, and there are different price for different classes. Now, in, in, in planes, they have those classes uh, so that they can, I mean, they have different features, uh, but, the, but, the, but the amount, the price is different as well. But why do, we, why, why do they have classes in planes? Because this is how they can charge their customer according to the use of class. But guys, here, the classes are, uh, the, the IP address is divided into classes is, is based on the requirement of the number of IP addresses. So in A class, there will be most IP addresses. So the A class will be used by large companies B class will be used for medium size a medium to large companies and C class is used for small companies now in A class all IP addresses so I'm going to go back to uh, that definition again but A class will have all of the IP addresses they start from IP address number 10 uh, 10 uh, and they end by uh, they end at, so okay so they end by 126 so in A class, all the IP addresses, so in A class, IP address range will be from 10 to 126. And for uh, B class, the IP address will be from 126, 128, 128 to 129, 192, 191 actually. 191 in A, in B class and in C class IP addresses will be uh, from 192 uh, from 192 to 223. Okay, so in so this is uh, what was it?
So this is uh, 192 to uh, 223. Okay, hold on. Let me write that in a clear manner. So in A class, it will be 1 to 126. Sorry about that. And uh, in B class, it will be 128 to uh, 128 to 191. In here, 192 to uh, 223. And then in D class, it will be 224 to 239 and in E class it will be uh, so this is so these are the classes uh, so now how do you define these classes that it, so the first letter of the IP address will define the class the first letter of the IP address will define the class so whenever you see an IP address and it starts from 192 uh, it starts from 192 we need to see that what what class of IP address is this so does it uh, is it from class a IP address no 192 is not from this because a class a IP address starts from 10 to 126 is it a class B IP address? No, it is not. Is it a class C IP address? Yes, this IP address is class C IP address. So the first letter of the IP address, remaining letter of, uh, so we don't care about the rest of the letters, but the first letter indicates that what class of IP address it is. Now, why do we need to remember the classes? Because the classes defines the subnet mask. So subnet mask will be uh, defined by the class. So class A IP address will always have a subnet mask of 255.0.0.0. So this is a subnet mask of all the class A IP address, uh, which means that any IP address that's, that's, that falls in between this. So let's say I have an IP address that starts with uh, 120 and 01.0.0.0. Uh, uh, so which means that what class is this? This is class A IP address and the subnet mask will always be 1255.0.0.0 class b ip address subnet mask will be 1255 255.0.0 so here we just added 255 under the second class as well which is 255 255.0.0 this will be always for class b address and class c address will always be uh, the first three are 255 so first three octet will always be 255. So this is why we need to remember the classes, the class of IP address. So if you see the first number, you will you will find out the subnet mask of this uh, IP address. So the class A IP addresses start from 10 to 126. Uh, class B IP address starts from 128 to 191. Uh, class C IP address 192 to 223. And class D and class uh, E. Guys, these classes are not used in the in the network. These classes are only for research purposes. Uh, so these are the both classes are, are for R and D. So this is for this is for research purposes. So we don't worry about these two classes because these classes and 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 can we have uh, more uh, numbers in these classes? Can I have uh, 300? So from 255. So this is a question for all of you. Anyone can reply. So can I have a, a class F? Uh, from 255 to uh, 300? No, sir. No. We cannot? Why? Why we, we can, can, why we cannot have 300 this class? Because binary number, yeah, two, class number is 255. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Very good. Because the last number we can have in binary number is 255. And why is it 255? There is a logic behind this because 2 raised to the power 8 is 256. And since it starts from 0, so it, that's why 0 to 255. Excellent. Very good. So uh, IP addresses are divided into 5 classes. Whereas D and E, we don't need to remember. This is for research purposes. Whereas A to C, we use them in our network. So 10 to, to, uh, 10 to 126 is class a 
128 to 191 is class B, 192 to 223 is class C, and with class A, B, and C, we can find their subnet mask. Okay, so now we have, we can find the subnet mask. Now the next thing that we need to remember is the missing number. So there is one missing uh, number here between 126 and 128. All of the other numbers are covered, but 127 is not covered. Guys, 127 is used for special purpose. So the range 127 is used for special purpose. So 127, uh, class 127, all the IP addresses in this range uh, 0, 0.0 is used for loopback address. So this is known as a uh, loopback address. Loopback address is basically, uh, loopback address is used to check your own network card. So this is, this, this is to, the loopback address is basically used to check your own network card. Let's say uh, that uh, if I need to see, so before I can ping the other computer, let's say we have two IP addresses and two IP addresses need to uh, ping each other and they are not pinging each other, but I need to see how is my own network card doing. So here, let's say if I can go back here, I have two networks. So I have two networks here uh, uh oh keep okay so let's say i have two networks here uh, computer number 1 and computer number 2 and how do i uh, how do i know if they can communicate with each other they can communicate by pinging each other right i can have an ip address on this so let's say this is 192.168.10.10. Uh, .10. And this computer has an IP address of 192.168.10.12. How do I know that it is ping? We ping the IP address, right? We say ping and this IP address and it can ping. But what if, and Navid, I can take, I'll take your question in a moment, but what if I need to see that if the network card on the same computer is working fine or not? So guys, we ping the loopback address. So let's say if this is not pinging, then I would say that, that uh, then I will try to ping myself. By pinging myself, I can say, I can say this uh, ping 127.0.0.1. So if I ping this, it means that I'm checking my own network card before I can uh, before I can uh, before I can ping the other computer. So this is why it is known as loop back address. Loop may, loop meaning it is pinging itself. So this is why 128 127 complete range is not used in the professional networks. So in the professional network, only 10 to 126 IP addresses will be used for class A for large networks, and 128 to 191 will be used. 192 to 223 will be used. Rest of the IP addresses are for the uh, research purposes and 127 is specially assigned to its own network card and this is this is how we can check its own network card. Yes, Naveed, ask a, uh, you may ask a question. Yes, yeah, sir, you mentioned that these numbers, uh, sorry, can you close this window? Okay, okay, I will, I will. I, I'm just showing you and I'll take your, oh, sorry. Take your question. I'm just showing you if I ping 127.0.1, this is basically pinging itself. So it's a loopback address. So whenever you ping, uh, whenever you ping 127.0.0.1 and it's not pinging, it means that the problem is with your network card. So that's why uh, we, before pinging anyone else, we can ping our own network card by uh, using 127 address. Okay, yes. Okay. Uh, so you mentioned like uh, uh, numbers from 10 to 126 is class A, then 128 to 191 is class B. Um, so this is just for identification purpose or what is the advantage of uh, these classes? Yes, yes. So Why getting... we have distributed these numbers into classes? What is the reason behind? Yes, so a very good question. Now that we know that there are different classes of network, now we need to understand what is the main purpose of this. So there is a purpose, just like we said, that there is a logic behind, uh, there is a logic behind everything. So here, uh, so I'm gonna answer this question. Actually, that's the, that's the second thing that we need. So, uh, okay. So here, guys, uh, one more time, and Navid, I'm going to answer that question uh, as part of my second discussion here. So going back to what have we learned so far, everyone? What have we learned so far? Let's uh, let's see what have we learned right from the start. Guys, today's lecture was all about IP addresses. 
uh, number one. So let's take these five minutes and review everything. Uh, so IP addresses starts from IP address is a unique number, number one. And uh, and at this point, at this point, if you can just uh, keep, uh, repeat behind me whenever I am repeating, I mean, if you can go fast, that will be excellent. But when I'm on a repeat slide, guys, just say these numbers on your own as if you are teaching it to someone. So just like what I'm uh, re re reviewing this, you need to review on your own as well, but say the words, guys, say the words. Uh, don't just listen, just say the word here. So starting with IP address, number one, it's a unique number. It is used for identification. It is used throughout the world. The examples are SIN numbers are used uh, in Canada for tax purposes. Passport numbers are used throughout the world. Employee IDs and those are numbers and letters as well. Telephone numbers are unique. So numbering, uh, using numbering for identifying something is not something new. It is always there. And that's the only way you can have a unique number. Otherwise, you cannot uh, have names because names can be similar throughout the world. Secondly, IP address, any device on the network needs to have an IP address. So this is a part of very basic troubleshooting on uh, throughout the network. Uh, even when the network guy come to your house and if network internet is not working, working, so the very first thing he would check is the IP address. Are you getting the IP address? Because the IP address should be automatically given to your, your device from your router, from your Wi-Fi router. So the second thing we discussed how many devices throughout the world have IP needs IP address. It's the desktops, it's the laptops, smartphones, gaming box, and appliances as well. On the next slide, we discussed that IP addresses. So when it comes to addresses in real life, uh, e even in real life, we have two types of addresses, physical address and a logical address. Physical address is the physical location of your house. Logical address is the address assigned in the books. And, and so it's easier to get to the logical address. And so, so far, and it's the same goes for all of the devices. Devices have MAC addresses that is uh, as a physical address. And these MAC addresses are, they are assigned by manufacturers. Uh, so whenever they make the networking equipment, they will have to assign a, a MAC address. And there is an international body that controls this. So if IBM is creating network cards, uh, they need to they need to get those IP addresses from that international body so that the numbers will be unique throughout the world. No two network cards will have the same MAC address. All of them will have uh, their own MAC addresses. And then we have IP address as logical address uh, used for all of the organization within, the, within, within all devices. Now, when we talk about IP address, uh, logical address, logical address is of two types, IPv4 and IPv6. And here we need to remember IPv4 is an older technique and IPv6 is a newer technique. And later we will be discussing a bit about IP address. IPv6 is not used uh, 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 is not used at the moment in uh, throughout the world. Uh, only few places uh, in the world that are using IPv6. So this is a newer IP scheme and this is older IP scheme. And why do we need a newer IP scheme? Uh, because uh, because uh, these IP, IPv4 addresses are finished. They are already used within the world. So this is why they came up with in back in uh, uh, 2000 and uh, actually mid of, uh, so 2000, start of 2000, uh, they started thinking of making uh, IPv6 addresses. Uh, so, uh, so this is a new scheme that we will discuss later on, but IPv4 is made up of private and public. So there is a private address and a public address. How do we remember this? At home, when we use uh, all of the devices, it used private address and on the internet used by banks, uh, the websites, they all have IP addresses. TD Bank has IP address. Uh, so Bank of America has an IP address. Bank of Sydney has an IP address. So these all websites, they use public IP address. Now IP stands for internet protocol and internet, this IP address, IPv4 address is made up of 32 bits. And each, uh, so, and then each IP address is made up of four octets and each, each octet there is eight bits in each octet. Uh, now, uh, so eight bits in each octet and there cannot be a number more than 255. Then we understood why there cannot be a number of more than 255 because two raised to the power uh, eight is maximum 255. And so then we started discussing about why do we, why there are eight bits. 
there are eight bits because computer only understands the uh, binary language. Why does a computer understand a binary language? Because the digital the signals in the computer that travel from everything is digital signals. Why can it cannot have analog signals? It cannot have analog signals because it is difficult to measure the high and low end. So computers have digital uh, signals that can be divided into binary language one and zero. And so this is why computer can only understand this number. Computer cannot understand 192, 168, 100.10. Uh, computer only can only understand this number, uh, binary number. So this is why uh, this number is made up of 32 bits. And when we convert, uh, so then why do we need a decimal number? We need a decimal number because we humans cannot uh, work with these numbers because these numbers are so much, so many that we cannot work. Maybe, maybe there might be a few superhuman who can understand these numbers and can work with these IP. I mean, imagine if I tell, if I want to say that uh, Navid, go to this uh, IP address one one zero 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 zero. I mean, I cannot even say that number. How can we work with these numbers? So this is why they came up with conversion from binary to decimal number. So we understand that decimal number, we work with decimal number, and then we, uh, and, and, but the computer understand binary number. This, this took us to a second uh, discussion that how, to can, how, we, how can we convert from decimal to binary? Now decimal to binary on a calculator, it's just few clicks that you can do and you can convert from decimal to binary. Why do you need to convert from decimal to binary? Because in 70-741, there might be a requirement where you need to do a conversion. For that reason, we need to understand. Then we came up with this, a very simple table technique that if you can write this technique, you can convert any binary number to any number, okay? Uh, so, uh, so, right, uh, so Ashish is saying it's like how Alan M named his dog. <laughs> Okay, okay, uh, right. So, uh, so Ashish, uh, I mean, can you explain this? Uh, everyone needs a refresher joke or something. It's basically how he named his uh, child's name, right? It's like you, we ran out of regular names. He named her like A twelve E. Right, right. He went straight to binary, right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> So, so guys, uh, I mean, if you can remember the if you can remember the logic behind this, anyone can make this table and can do a conversion. Uh, then, then we came up with the discussion of IPv4 addressing. Now, IPv4 addressing are made by are divided into four, uh, five classes uh, from which class A, B, C, and D, and E. Class D and E are not used, they're used for research purposes, whereas class A, B, and C are used in a regular network. So class A IP addresses, they always start from uh, number 10 and they to 126 are class A IP addresses, class B IP addresses is 128 to 191, class C is 192 to 223 are class C IP addresses. Now, why do we need to remember, uh, how do we remember class A? Because classes of IP address, they represent the subnet mask. And there is a logic behind this that why do we use this subnet mask and this subnet mask and this subnet mask? So now let's move, move forward. And uh, uh, so, and, and, and then one thing to remember that one to 126 is class A address. And right after 126, 127 is used for loopback address. Loopback address is not used in uh, public or private. I mean, you cannot assign this number to any network card. So if I say create one server and assign 127.0.0.100 or maybe 127.100.100, you cannot do that because it, it won't work because it won't work. Okay, so the next thing that we, that we need to understand is that why is this, uh, why do we have the, why do we have even these classes? And why do, why am I saying that a class A has the largest number of IP addresses and class B has uh, the smallest, uh, small number of IP addresses? So the next thing that we need to understand here is uh, that when we, when we say this IP address, IP address is made up of uh, four octets, right? 
So it is made up of four octets. So if I say a class A address, this will look like, so this will look like this here. Um, so this will look like 10.0.10.0, uh, .0 right? And then the subnet mask for this IP address will be 0.0.0. .0. Even our computers, they understand this as well. So, so if I can show you my, uh, my if I can show you my, uh, my network card, uh, where is my network card? So I'm gonna go into my network card here. So I'm switching off one of the switching on one of the computers and so here if I go to one of my network cards, so view network properties and so here, so this is just viewing the network properties. I wanted to show you that. So if I go to my ethernet card and change to advance. Yes, here, uh, not here actually. Uh, so I need to go into change adopter options and within change adopter options, I wanted to show you, let's say if I go to my ethernet card, remember where we set up the IP address. So here, if I want to set up an IP address, uh, within this IP address, if I go into IP address and here, if I type any class of address, the subnet mask will automatically uh, pop up. So here, let's say if I type 10 dot, 0, .0, 0.0.0 and I click on tab, this will automatically take a, a class A subnet mask. Let's say if I start from 192 and uh, type anything, then, and if I remove this, and from here, it should automatically understand. So 192, 168, it will automatically take class C IP address. So I just click tab and it automatically showed me class C IP address. So which means that, uh, that when, when we use an IP address, this, this uh, the computers uh, automatically understand. Let's say if I type the 172, which is a uh, class B IP address. So this is a class, this is part of class B. Class, class C starts from uh, 192 and class A ends on 126, so 172 is class B IP address. So as soon as I click on this, uh, it should show me a, a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0. So as soon as I click on this, it automatically understands. So these all devices are uh, programmed to understand the subnet mask of each one. Now, now we try to understand, now we try to, Now we try to understand that what is the main purpose of this. Okay, so here guys, here uh, on this slide, so IP address is made up of all uh, this numbering. Now comes to that part that why, uh, what is the main purpose of, why cannot, why it can't, why, why it can't be just one class, why there is a difference of class A, B and C. So why can't we just say uh, all the IP addresses is class A and uh, all of the classes are from uh, IP address uh, 10 to, to, to uh, uh, 223. 223 equals 224 is research purposes. Okay, so now we are trying to understand why classes. The reason why we have classes because networks are all of different types. Networks are of all different types. So network can be, so here I'm gonna say, network can be a small network. A network can be a medium sized network and a network can be a large network, 
Okay, so small network obviously needs small number of IP addresses. Medium sized network needs a large number, uh, medium, uh, uh, I mean, medium range of IP addresses. Large network needs large number of IP addresses. Now, what is the meaning of a small network? A clinic. A clinic needs, uh, a clinic might need uh, maybe just uh, anywhere from a clinic, a small clinic to a medium sized clinic. And it's a clinic, not a medical center, because uh, th there is a difference between a small clinic, then a medical center, then a hospital. So a, cl a small clinic can need uh, maybe uh, at most maybe 100 computers connected. And most of the time, these small clinics have anywhere from uh, 15 to 20 computers, or maybe some clinics have only five to 20 computers connected. So which means that they need five uh, 20 IP addresses for the computers. And plus they need maybe a, there, there might be a printer and then there, there, there might be their uh, Wi Fi connection and all at max they, they, their network so uh, their requirement won't go more than 255. Most of the time, they are under 255 IP addresses required in a small clinic. So this is why in a small clinic, we use a C class range. We use class C IP addresses. So in all clinics, and this is the same formula that works at home as well. So in at, at home, uh, we don't have device requirement of more than 255 uh, uh, IP addresses. Uh, so, so this is why at home, all the IP addresses, they use a range of 192, 168. So uh, in your home router, wherever you are, in US, in Canada, in Australia, in Pakistan, everywhere throughout the world, the IP addresses will be at home. It will always be 192, 168 IP address. Why? Because this is the smallest range available and this is used for small networks. So at home, we have a small network. Now in medium sized places, there is a requirement of anywhere from, so anywhere where there is a requirement of uh, more than 255, uh, 255 IP addresses and more. Uh, there you can use the range uh, class B IP addresses are used for this because class B can have more IP addresses. And I'm going to come to that point that why that how do we distinguish between that C has less number of IP addresses? and class B has a uh, medium range of IP addresses and large networks they have uh, class, uh, class A IP addresses. So in order to understand this, we need to understand that in each IP address, so each IP address, guys, what are we trying to understand now? What we, what we are trying to understand that why a range can have more and less number of IP addresses. So each IP address is made up of two types of addresses. There is something called a network address. And there is something called a host address. Host address. So network address and host address. Now, wherever the word 255 comes, that is known as a network address. And wherever zero comes in the subnet mask, so how do you represent this? So wherever 255 comes, that, that is known as a, uh, so within the subnet mask, here I'm gonna say subnet mask starts from 255.0.0.0. .0 .0. 255 always represents a network address and rest of the them uh, represents the host address. So this is, so in class A, in class A, the three octets will be used for the host address and class, uh, and just the first octet will be used for the network address. And bear with me on this uh, for next 10 minutes and this will be more clear. So in class A, there are, the, the first octet will be used as um, uh, as network address and the last three octets will be used as host address. And in class B, class B, the first two will be used as a, the first two will be used as a network address and last two will be used as a host address. And in class C, class C will be, uh, the first three will be used as a network address right and last octet will be used as a host address so now that we know that these uh, that these network addresses so if i can write them in this manner uh, so boxes in the form of boxes here this is a network address and this is a host address so host address basically represents that how many hosts can be in this subnet 
so host address can represent that how many hosts can be in this network so in class a there is only one octet uh, dedicated for the network address in class b there is uh, two octets dedicated for the uh, network address and in class c there are three uh, there are three octets uh, dedicated for the network address now when i say that the in class a let's talk about class a there can be the first octet is only for the network address and all of the rest of the um, uh, octets are for the host address now how how can we know that how many uh, networks can be in class a in class a what we do is we uh, convert the value of whatever number is here to a uh, to a binary uh, to a number of ip addresses so in this uh, there will be so since there are only 3 uh, uh, there are only 8 bits so i'm going to move here just for better understanding uh, and just bear with me on this i know that this is uh, getting a bit dry uh, but uh, uh, fortunately or unfortunately we need to go through this and it won't be that dry once you understand the logic so i'm saying the class a address class a address has network address is so first octet represents the network address and rest of the octets represents host address so in class a there are 8 bits 2 raised to the power 8 is 256 right and so which means that uh, there can be in this there can be only 256 networks in this address and uh, so here uh, so so there can be 256 networks can be made in class a 256 networks is networks can be represented in class a and how many hosts can be in this network so in this network uh, there can be 2 raised to the power uh, 3 into 8 3 into 8 how much is 3 into 8 is 32 is it so uh, 8 16 30 uh, 8 16 32 yes 32 so now we need to find out what is 2 raised to the power 32 so if i open a calculator and see that what is 2 raised to the power 32 so 2 raised to the power uh sorry okay hold on uh where is 2 raised to the power i think this should be in the scientific calculator and so yeah so 2 raised to the power 32 2 raised to the power 32 is uh, there can be uh, 2.4.2 billion ip addresses 2 raised to the power 32 is actually hold on so uh, total is 8 bits so that's a 32 bit address so so first of all let me write this number so total number of ip addresses total number of ips uh, can be used in ipv4 can be used in ipv4 is 4.2 billion ip addresses 4.2 billion now uh, so let me check that uh, that here so sorry i need to do this uh, basic uh, calculation as well which is 2 into uh, sorry uh, i need to say 3 uh, 3 into 8 is sir sorry to disturb you uh, but in class a opt Three, uh, two raised to the power twenty-four. Twenty-four should not 24. be twenty-four. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Yes. So this is twenty-four. Yeah. That I just wanted to confirm. Okay. So so two raised to the power twenty-four, right? And what is two raised to the power twenty-four? And just bear with me here, and we need to find that out. Calculator, and if we change it. change it to uh, scientific calculator so 2 which is this one so if in the exam you have to convert like this and most probably there will be a calculator you need to find the value like this 2 raised to the power uh, 
is 16, uh, 1677. So this is 16. So in this, so so in this there can be 16777. I closed it down. Two sixteen. So this much of IP addresses can be in class A IP address. So in class A, if someone asks that what is the biggest number of hosts that can be accommodated in uh, class A range, in class range, in class A range, I think this is 16 million IP addresses. Uh, so this is 16, uh, 16 million IP addresses. Uh, so, I mean, whatever this number is, this is, uh, I mean, so, so on this, there can be this number of IP addresses. Now let's quickly see that how much host IP addresses can be accommodated in class B and class C. So if you can do the math on your own, uh, you can type the, type that in the chat window. So I'm going to just do it here quickly. So in class B, we know that the first two octet is for the network and last two octet is for the host so which means that 2 raised to the power 16 is here and 2 raised to the power 16 so if I, if somebody asks that how many hosts can be in this we need to find out 2 raised to the power 16 and class a uh, uh, in in class a how many host ip addresses can be here so the first three octet is for the network and last is for the host and this is uh, very simple for the host uh, because uh, here you can have say host and network. So in the host of class A, there can be only 255 IP addresses. There cannot be more. Why? Because there is only one octet dedicated for this and the total bits in, the, in this octet is eight. So it means that there cannot be more than in class, uh, sorry, in class C IP address, uh, there can be only uh, 255 IP addresses. So what is two raised to the power 16? So 2 raised to the power 16 is 65,000 IP addresses, 65, 535. So here, 65, 536. So this is 65,000. So now we can see the question, uh, the question was uh, that why do we need to divide these uh, IP addresses into classes? We are dividing these IP addresses into classes because the networks are of all different types. Uh, the networks can be a small network, network can be a large, uh, medium sized network and large network. And this is why the ranges are divided into this uh, class A, B and C. In class A, you can accommodate large number of IP addresses. And how many ad uh, IP addresses can be accommodated in, in class A IP address? Uh, this is 16 million IP addresses can be accommodated in large. So which means the company like IBM, company like uh, Microsoft, that has offices throughout the world in their network, they, they need their own range of IP addresses. Uh, so they can, they can use class A range, which is 10, which is 10.0.0 .0 range. And uh, the medium sized companies can make use of uh, the class B IP address and small companies can use class C IP address. So this is why at home, if you all, I mean, uh, there is Usher sitting in US uh, and the rest of you are sitting in Canada. I'm sitting here in Australia. Uh, we, if we all see the IP config of my, of our laptop, our, our laptop will, our, the range will start from 192. So they use one common range for all the small network, which is 192 range, uh, 192.168. Okay. So now that we understand that what, what is the main purpose of these classes? And now we also understand that what is the main purpose of 255? Two, so the and subnet mask of class B IP address is 255.0.0 and subnet mask of class C is 255.255.255.0. This means that these first three octets in class C IP address will always be 255. This, this number will never change. And in class B, 
it, the range is uh, 255, 255.255.0.0 and in class A, only the first octet is used for network IP address. And why do we have classes class A, B and C? Class A is for large networks because you have most number of hosts accommodated in class A. Class B is for medium to large size network where you can accommodate 65,000 hosts using the class B address. And in class C, it is for the smaller networks. So smaller network, why? Because it, we can accommodate the smallest number of hosts in this, in this network, okay? So before moving on everyone, let's take a, let's take a 10 minutes break here, uh, just to freshen up, have a coffee, move around, uh, walk around, talk to the kids and uh, come back in 10 minutes. Sir, before we leave one question. Yes, please go ahead. Or, uh, I want to add something regarding the loopback IP address, which, yes. which starts from 127. Right. I think this is very important for everyone as a network people like 127 loopback address usually we use when there is no network and your own network card is damaged or not you can check it right yes yes excellent right that is very important as a network person right yeah to, it, to it is we use 127, yeah Exactly. It is equally important for a cloud and system admin as well, because this loopback address will let you know if your card is damaged or not. This is a very important point. Thank you so much. Uh, and one I, more thing on top of it, sir, doesn't matter your network is up or down, this loopback will work on your own computer to let you know whether it is your net, uh, network card is damaged or something else is the problem. Excellent, excellent. That's a, that's a very good uh, troubleshooting point. Uh, so loopback address, the main purpose of loopback address is checking your own device. If your own device is capable of connecting to other devices, uh, so we always ping our loopback address. Excellent. So guys, it's a 10 minutes break. I know it's, uh, it's, it's a kind of a dry subject today, but it's very important. The IP addressing is very important. And why we are getting 10 minutes break? Because we still need to have uh, an understanding. Uh, so this will be going into uh, more interesting. The topic will be more interesting right after the break.
Hello everyone, welcome back after the break and uh, I hope everyone is freshened up. So let's continue. Uh, so let's see first how many people are present and uh, so type yes in the chat window. Naveed and Dishan already typed yes in the chat window and we are getting into a very interesting part of understanding IP addresses and it will be over very soon and we'll go back to our practical uh, side. So, uh, but uh, understanding IP address is important for understanding uh, the networks. Okay. So please type in the chat window if you're present uh, here in this lecture. Uh, so uh, we stopped at, we stopped at, uh, so class A, B, and C IP uh, addresses. Thank you, Naveed, Dishan. Ashish and Wasim and, and uh, Salim and Asher, uh, if you're present, please type yes in the chat window and Alamgir as well. Okay, so uh, so guys, just before the break, we understood the uh, we understood uh, that uh, we understood that uh, we have IP addresses. Now, IP addresses has two parts. Number one is uh, network part, and the uh, number one is network part, and the second one is uh, second one is uh, the uh, host part. Okay, so <clears throat> so a very very quick review, a very very quick review, and then. So a uh, very, very quick review of IP address. What do we know about IP address? Number one, here IP address, IP address. Number one, it's a logical address. It's of uh, two types, IPv4 and IPv6. IPv4 is older, whereas IPv6 is newer number two and so uh, understanding ipv4 is ipv4 is 32 bit address number one uh, number two it is made up of four octets and uh, in each octet you cannot have more than 255 uh, number the number 255 and uh, <clears throat> so and then we also have we also have uh, so private and public IP address. So, and then, <clears throat> so we haven't discussed about private and public IP address and I'm gonna go into private and public IP address. IP four, IPv4 addresses can be a private or public IP address. Uh, next one, so older 32 bit, four octet, 0 to 255 number and uh, private and uh, public IP address. And then uh, classes, we have in IP address, there are classes from uh, A, B and C. And all these different classes have different subnet masks. Uh, so A has uh, 255.0.0.0 uh, and B class has 255.255.0.0 and C is 255.255.255.0 and that represents and each uh, each IP address has a network address and a host address. So network, 
network address and the host address. So each IP address is made up of network address and host address. Is it something new for our address? No, uh, it is not something new. So what is our home address? So home addresses are made up of uh, home addresses are made up of house number. So we have house number and then after that there will be a street number street number and then uh, there is uh, after street number there is city name of the city and the country so this is very normal so you can think of uh, you can think of uh, the street number and the city number and the, as a network address whereas house number is the host address so in one locality you can have 50 houses uh, but all houses have different numbers in them uh, okay so now we as we know that uh, all of the network are made up of this now ip addresses are of two types ip4 ipv uh, four address is of two types. Number one is private address. And number two is public address. So private address, uh, for private address, uh, the private address, there are three ranges of IP addresses dedicated to private address. Remember that in IPv4, IPv4 there is IPv4, uh, there is the range is used between uh, IP address 10 to 223. 223 before 10 is used for management purposes so 1 to 10 the range is 1 to 10 used for the management purpose and after 224 to onwards to 2 to 255 to 224 to 255 is kind of for research purposes this is not used so the only range that is in used in the world uh, for all these ip addresses is between 10 to 223 now uh, guys uh, think of this each uh, each uh, each number ha can have 255 ip address so for example if i can say uh, that uh, 192 192 168 and uh, and uh, 0, .0, uh, 0.0 this range this complete range can have so first of all what is the subnet mask of this uh, what will be the subnet mask of this uh, if you can type that in the chat window if anyone wants to unmute and 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 let me know what will be the subnet mask of this ip address Clock is ticking. What is the subnet mask? Vishan is saying 255. No, it is. What class of IP address is this? It's C, sir. 255, 255, 255, 0. Yes. So, first, yes. So, I, I thought you said the first two is 255. Oh. Okay. So it is, uh, remember the class C has 255 to 255.255.255.0. This is the subnet mask of class C IP address. And why is it class C IP address? Because it falls under uh, in the class C IP scheme, which is which starts from 190 to end to ends at 223 so so which means that in the first so the, in this range in the, so first of all in this range the first three octets are dedicated for the network which means that these will not change only the host can be accommodated in the last one and how many total number of hosts can be in this subnet 255 so only 250 with this IP address, you can have 255 IP addresses. Now coming back to IPv4 and a private and public IP address. Why, why is there a need of dividing the IP address into private and public? So guys, what happens is, as we already know, so now we are trying to understand why there is a public and private IP addresses. So guys, there is uh, the, the reason is that for private IP address, uh, internet has internet, uh, the, the company that basically manages all these IP addresses uh, they uh, dedicate three ranges for among all from all these IP addresses they dedicated three ranges for private IP address so for class A if any company wants to use a class A IP address inside the organization they can use this range uh, 10.0.0.0 0 .0. this range is dedicated for uh, as a for the company uh, for for the uh, for, for can be used internally inside the organization and for class b for class b there is a range that is dedicated for the companies which is 172.16.0.0 and for class c 
and it will be clear in a moment so just give me bear with me with this uh, so cl for class c the range is that that is dedicated is 192 168.0.0 so these three ranges are dedicated for a private uh, for all of the private organizations so the next question is then what about the other ip addresses so guys for all other ip addresses starting from this all other ip addresses are dedicated to the public network so what is a public network public network anything all the devices that are connected over the network over the internet so devices over internet so all devices that are over internet are considered as public network and on the public network uh, how many uh, how many things are on public network first of all your complete internet is public so all websites are public network so all website needs an ip address so how many websites are there in the world so throughout the world there are millions and millions of website and each website needs an ip address so a unique ip address so each IP address need a each website need a unique IP address so unique IP address is required so all of the other IP addresses other than these IP addresses meaning the range uh, 11 12 and so on 13 and all the IP addresses till uh, 223 these are all used for the public internet and they cannot be used inside the organization internally so uh, so what is the private ranges that are used among from each range only the 10 range IP addresses so so in the public there won't be any IP address assigned to a public website from range 10 uh, so for from class B IP address there will this this 172 range uh, will not be used in the public network and same like uh, 192 range will not be used in the public network why because they are uh, they are dedicated for the private range IP addresses now the next question is why do they need to dedicate this IP address and before even going there uh, let's see the IP addresses of a few websites here so if I go to let's say go to google.com let's say google.com and within google.com what's happening is uh, that uh, we use the name but the name is always uh, converted into an ip address let's see the ip address of google.com so uh, in order to see the uh, ip address of google.com all i need to do is to ping the name If I ping, if you're connected to the internet and you ping this name, then you are getting the IP address 216582320314. Uh, uh, IP address. What is the IP address of msn.com? So msn.com IP address is 13.82.28 and uh, msn.com. IP address so it's not pinging at the moment but the website uh, definitely will be working so yes the complete name is www.msn.com which is which is this IP address so as you can see each and every website needs to have an IP address so this is why the biggest range is uh, so so the biggest range of IP addresses is dedicated to the public network and only um, th that complete stack of IP addresses these three ranges are dedicated to private companies now in private what is what is defined by private anything that is in internal to the that is not directly connected to the public so so in private ranges uh, private ranges we use so the home network so home network is a private range so at home we have all of the devices that are connected uh, they all use 192 range because it's less than 255 devices and in hotels they also use private range in hospitals uh, they also use private range internally internally now there is a reason behind this that we had that we had to dedicate uh, we had to dedicate public private range and a public we had to divide the private range and public range now uh, basic uh, so now we need to understand that why there is a difference between private and public range the answer is very simple that uh, we all know that all devices on the network all devices on the network needs to have an ip address 
Okay, so this is uh, all devices on the network requires IP address. So this is clear, right, for everyone. Uh, without a with, without an IP address, no two devices can connect. Now, with on on IPv6, how many IP addresses we can use in total? Let's say if we are if we are to use the complete range of IP addresses, how many total IP addresses are available? So total IP addresses are available to raised to the power two hundred thirty-two because it's a thirty-two bit address, right? And two raised to the power thirty-two. Previously, when I when we calculated accidentally, when I was calculating the class a ip address 2 raised to the power 2 is about 4.2 billion ip addresses right so this is 4.2 billion ip addresses now uh, 4.2 billion ip address seems a lot but not a lot so back in 1996 they uh, they realized that this 2.4 billion ip addresses will not be enough for the world why uh, because guys uh, uh, because uh, it's not only that we have devices connected over the internet we also have companies with that that has a requirement of devices connected within the organization so first of all these ip addresses need to uh, need to be available on the public network Let's think of a public network. Guys, what are we trying to understand? We're trying to understand why do we have private IP and why do we have a public IP? So, uh, so a public IP, let's think of the public IP. On public IP, we have websites, number one. Uh, so let's take an example of just one website. So for example, I, as a user, I'm connecting to google.com. So I'm connecting to google.com that has a certain IP address. Let's say the IP address is 204, 19, 32, and 16. So I need to connect to this, uh, this website. So which means that my computer needs to have an IP address and the a website needs to have an IP address. So if my computer needs to have an IP address and website needs to have, a, have an IP address, this is two IP addresses. But in reality, how many people are using Google at the moment, guys? Uh, probably, probably 1 billion people are using this uh, to connecting to Google. Or maybe, maybe 6 billion people are connected to, uh, to connected to Google. And how many websites are there? So, so let's take this simple example. Uh, let's say I'm connecting, two IP addresses are required. And let's say whole world is using Google and literally the whole world is using Google. If I can, if, I mean, this won't be an exaggerated number. If I say that 7 billion people, 7, 7 billion devices are connected to Google, this won't be an exaggerated number. Why? Because uh, in each house, uh, in each house, there are, if, uh, if my house can have 20 devices, then, and my house is a small house, uh, think of a large house, think of a, a medium sized house. So house and think of a company, think of a small company, a small organization with 200 employees and 200 employees are connecting to Google and then their devices are connecting to Google. So that goes up to not even 7 billion, it goes up to 14 billion IP addresses required throughout the world if we only use public IP address. So this uh, number they realized back in 1996 and they realized that, you know, this IPv4 scheme will not be enough uh, to accommodate all the devices requirement. Why? Because there is no communication without IP address. All devices needs to have an IP address. So this is why back in 1996, they came up with uh, the scheme of private IP address and public IP address. Why? Because uh, if we use all the IP addresses for the public, then there won't be uh, enough devices. At one point, 4.2 billion will finish and then uh, uh, devices won't be able to connect. So then they said, you know, let's dedicate three ranges just for private IP address. So when, the, when you have an internal network, when the devices are connected into their own boundary of network, then they can use only private IP address. So these three devices either at home or office, uh, they all they need to use private range. Then the private ranges are starting from 10.0.0.0, this complete range, and 172 complete range, uh, 172 complete range, and uh, actually this range only, uh, 172.16 range and 192 for smaller offices. Now, how does that work? 
how that how does that work how is it and and rest of the ranges are for all the websites uh, so if i can show you this that these these numbers are or, or these numbers are all bought by lot of organizations so these numbers are already gone so i had it okay so i can show you this here so if i can make it so this is basically so if you can look at this picture here so this picture is basically showing uh the number of ip addresses this is a map of the world and here this is on this side i mean on this side this is europe so here this is us this is canada this is europe uh this is uh so th this is this picture is showing that how many public ip addresses are bought by these different organizations uh so there is uh so in canada there is these ranges in use so if i can kind of so in canada there is the range from 76 15 74 all ip addresses that start from this 76 15 and 74 are mostly from canadian side in asia pacific they use the range of uh, ranges anywhere from these number i mean this is not important this i'm just showing it to you that how companies have bought uh, how the ip addresses are divided throughout the world in us these ranges are used 63 range 64 range 68 69 70 70 71 in europe this is 79 78 77 uh, so uh, so 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 these ranges are kind of divided in north american range so meaning that these ranges are used these ranges are already dedicated to these organization but this is not important for us to uh, this is not uh, important for us to remember, but I'm just here making uh, showing you the concept that how this is all uh, how this is all divided and uh, and uh, and here uh, Alamgir shared uh, this uh, this information that about uh, 1.3 uh, result in one second and okay so this is the use of google at the moment so there are many websites where you can get all this information yes so so guys the main point here is that if this ip scheme would have not been invented then most then back in 90s we could have ran out of ip addresses so this is why private range which is 10 172 so interview question is what is the private range ip addresses the private range ip addresses are 10.0.0.1 for class a 172 116.0 for class b and 192.168 for class c so this is for small network at home network and rest of all of the range is divided uh, throughout the world so throughout the world uh, these ranges are divided uh, throughout the world so range uh, 11 12 13 uh, and then uh, 171 173 and and so on so this is all divided throughout the world because each uh, so each uh, uh, IP address, so each IP address need to be assigned to this. So the important information that Alamgir, uh, so Alamgir that mentioned that roughly two two trillion people search Google a day. Wow, that's huge. That's huge. Yeah. So which means that if two billion, two trillion people, you need that number of IP, you, you need that number of IP address. And uh, whereas uh, in uh, IPv4, there is only a range of 4.2 uh, billion, 4.2 billion. Now, the next big question is that how, how does it work? How does it work together? Uh, so you have uh, uh, two trillion people accessing the internet, but there is uh, the IP addresses are only uh, the IP addresses are only uh, 4.2 billion. So how how does it work? So guys, this works with the concept of NAT. This works with the concept of network address translation. Network address translation. Now, what are we trying to understand, guys? We are trying to understand that people who are sitting at home, so at home, if I have 20 devices, how does it work that my uh, all 20 devices are connected and all 20 devices need to be unique? So in between, we have uh, something called router. 
uh, in between the router that we received from our ISP. So here is a device that is known as, they are all connected to our ISP router. Uh, so that router can be uh, in Canada, it can be from Rogers, uh, so uh, and can be from Bell in, in, in States, it can be a different ISP and in Australia, it's a different ISP. And on the other side, it is connecting to the internet. Internet. So this router is basically connecting us to the internet and on this side it is connecting us to this. So in this router, there is something called netting. Uh, uh, there is something called NAT software. This NAT software, what it does, so, for, so first of all, there will be a public IP address that is assigned to each router. So each router has a public IP address. So let's say what is my public IP address. So if you need to see your public IP address, you can just go to this website. So everyone just go to this website and just say here, and this IP address will change. So, so it's fine. Uh, so here uh, you can type here, what's my IP address? What's what's my IP address. So when you type what's my IP address, this is my public IP address to my ISP. And uh, when you type in your uh, computer, this will be the public interface to this IP address. So, so at home, my home router will have this IP address and there is a firewall. So don't worry if people know your public IP address, it doesn't matter because the, the, there is a firewall people cannot connect, but this can be risky as well in a sense, if somebody knows your public IP address, they can directly attack your if there are hackers and all that but this is all protected by isp so my public ip address is 139.218.58 so here i'm gonna type here right here uh, 139 ip address so my public ip address is 139 138 let's say any public ip address 59 plus uh, 12. So let's say this is my public IP address. And uh, so on this router, but on this side, uh, what it does, this, this netting will translate this public IP address to 192 network. So at home, 192, 0.0. Uh, slash 24 network. So this will convert this to this. So NAT, what, what NAT does, NAT translates this one public IP address to hundreds of private IP addresses. That's the main function of a NAT. So NAT will connect uh, one public IP address. So here I'm just going to write it in very simple words. A NAT is a service that connects that connects uh, hundreds of private IP address to public to one public IP address. to one public IP address. So at home uh, or in the office, since we are using a private range, so my first computer uh, will get an IP address of 168, 192, uh, sorry, it will get one dot 10, second will get two dot 10, third will get three dot 10, and fourth will get, uh, uh, sorry, uh, one, uh, one dot 10 and one dot 11. Sorry, I have to delete that. Uh, so this is the IP addresses that we are uh, we are working with at home. So at home, sir, I have a confusion. Yes, please go ahead. So this one ninety two one sixty eight zero dot this way, this is private and it will come in class C, right? Yes. And sir, this ISP one three eight two nine five nine twelve, this IP address which comes which class, sir? So this is uh, 139, right? 139. Yes, and remember that, uh, so class A starts from 10 to, yes. uh, 10 to 126. And right. class B starts from 120, 128 to 191, right? Okay. And class C starts from 192. But to... sir, class, class A starts only like one, uh, like... Uh after that zero, zero, zero. But here all four is using, like all four is having a number, sir. Very good, very good question. Yes, Excellent question. Cause, uh, cause yes, this is what we need to remember that only the first octet represents the class. So rest of the numbers can be anything. 
So only we need to keep eye on what is the first number of the IP address. So that represents the class. And the rest number uh, represents host, right? That uh, rest of the rest of the numbers can represent host and the network. Because in class B there are two, the network uh, two numbers will be used for the network, and in class C three numbers. But in order to find the class of an IP address, always look at the first number. So if this is one thirty nine, it means that it's a class B address. Right, sir. Okay. So so now that we now that we can see that NAT is the one that can that can so NAT gave us that benefit that uh, it doesn't matter on this side of the router you have thousands of computers but you only need one public IP address. So let's say in Rogers, uh, in Rogers, uh, they have 5,000 employees and 5,000 employees are using 10,000 devices. So each employee has one laptop and one desktop and, uh, and maybe a printer connected and then their smartphones are connected. So in, in, in one office, in their headquarter, if they're using, let's say 20,000 devices, it doesn't matter. In 20,000 devices, they can use private range on this side, but they just need one public IP address. Okay, so this basically saved the world with the number of IP addresses. If NAT would have not been here, then in other words, then all these devices needed to have the public IP address as well. So, uh, so back in 1996, when NAT was not introduced, then large companies already bought all of the IP addresses. So, so at that point, uh, Microsoft bought uh, like uh, 2 million IP addresses, thinking that, you know, that each computer will need an IP address. So that's why we, we so there are many big companies, they bought big chunks of IP addresses in 90s. So at that point, they realized, you know, if all the big companies will buy the big chunk of IP addresses since they need their devices to be connected together, then what will happen to all of the other organizations? This is where they invented the concept of NAT, that on this side of the network, you can have thousands and thousands of computers working with a private range which is the three ranges 10 and 172 and 192. And on this side, they just need one IP address. So one public IP address. So this is why at home we have one public IP address, but at home you can have, doesn't matter, you have 100 devices, they all use a private range IP address. So sir, I have a question. Yes, please go ahead. So with the NAT, if it's host or custom, so that will be also like a public network? with the NAT? Yeah, one is NAT, right? And then it's host and the custom. So that will be also a part of a public network? Network. Uh, so I don't, what is host and custom? I mean, I don't remember. The network cards are right. Sorry? The network, the network card. card. Yeah. Yeah, one is NAT, right? The one uh, one is host. Is NAT, okay, so NAT is part of the router and one is the host, which means the computer? No, 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 the like uh, same network. Yes. Which is private network. Too, oh, right? the private network, yes. Yeah, and one is a custom network, which is a, uh, for virtual uh, network too, right? So oh, that, 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 that virtual that. network, yes. The so virtual is network that, is also a private network. So this... Uh, like uh, basically NAT has uh, two other kinds, the uh, host and uh, custom, right? Uh, maybe you know, maybe uh, it has, maybe it has, but, uh, but, but Alamgir, this is for the networking purpose and uh, maybe uh, NAT has that more, also, more. Sir, that one is also network card, you know, when you uh, uh, install a network card, you choose the option of NAT or host or custom, right? That's I'm asking. Okay, NAT, host or custom. And where do you see these properties? In the in VMware workstation or in the... Uh, when, when you add the card, you know, when you add extra card, right? Network okay, card. In, in VMware. So let me get there. So here on VMware, when I add a card. Yeah. Okay, let me go there. Oh yes, so 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 in here in VMware, uh, it gives you different type of networks uh, within VMware, uh, but that is uh, that is basically only specific to VMware. It's not a general NAT. Oh, okay. 
Okay, so don't worry about this. Uh, but so here I understand what you're saying now. Uh, that when we go to a network card, there is NAT, then there is yeah. host only, and there is bridged. Yeah, and there is custom too. Yeah. Right. So NAT simply means that NAT NATing when we talk about NAT. So here, uh, don't mix with this at the moment. Uh, we'll come back to this. But this is a diff this is just for virtual environment. Uh, Alamgir, because uh, if you mix it with this, then it will be difficult to understand. Okay. Oh. So at this point, I just want you to understand NAT is a service that connects the public network to a private network. Okay. So that's the only concept that we need to remember. And this answers the question that how did they came out with this, uh, the, 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 with this huge uh, problem in the world that if they would have not came up with netting, uh, then they would have needed trillions of IP addresses at that point. So how they came, so what was the solution? The solution they provided that, okay, so for the private network, they can use the same number of, so in Rogers, they can use the 10 range and in Microsoft, they can also use the same range and it, it doesn't matter. Why? Because Rogers uh, internal network is different from IBM's or Microsoft's internal network. So two companies, let's say they are physically located uh, side by side, but they can use both exactly the same range uh, because it's a private range. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, now the next thing here is, uh, now the next thing here we need to understand is a classful address and classless address. So this is the last topic. So classful address and classless address. So class full address is considered as public address. Classless address. So class full address and class less address. So, uh, <clears throat> so let's say Class full address is uh, that if we use the complete range, it is known as class full address. Now, in order to understand these two is let's take an example of class C address, which is uh, 192. Uh, so I'm going to come back to the definition of this in a moment. So, uh, and I'll come back to this slide in a moment. So now that we know now that we know the IP address. You know, in four hours, my PowerPoint also gets tired. And you all, all get, get tired too. So just give me 10, 10, 10, 10 minutes more on this, everyone. Okay. So here, uh, IP address. IP address of this. Now we need to understand class full address and class less address. So 168.10.10. Remember this address? And this address subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. So this is the subnet mask of this. Now this same subnet mask, this complete IP address can also be written in this manner. 192, 168, uh, 10.10 slash 24. <clears throat> now what we need to understand is that what is slash 24? So what is slash 24? Slash 24 is basically so slash uh, slash 24 is basically the same as this uh, this number. I mean, slash 24 is telling us that the 24 bits are dedicated for the network. So whenever you see a number here after slash, this means that 24 bits are dedicated to the network, which means that we know that eight bits are here, eight bits here, eight bits here. This makes 24. It means that 24 bits are dedicated to, ne to the network. So this means if I can write this in this manner, it means that the subnet mask of this will be this, okay? So this, uh, this bits represent that how many network bits are on? How many network bits are on? So let's say if now if I write this number, 
10 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 slash 8 what does this means so this means that eight network bits, bits are on so this what will be the subnet mask based on this number the subnet mask is that since only eight bits are on that will be 255 dot zero dot zero dot zero now how do you how do i know how do you know that if this will be 255 because 2 raised to the power 8 2 raised to the power 8 is 255 and 2 raised to the power uh, so here 24 meanings that 24 bits will be on uh, so this will be let me take it to another slide here uh, quickly understanding 192 168 uh, 10 dot 10 slash 24 meaning uh, that uh, you have 24 bits are on so if i can write it in this manner 255.255.255.0 and if i can write it in bits so uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, zero, 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 zero. So whenever you whenever you see this uh, this type of IP address, it simply means that how many network bits are on. So you can see that these are all on. This is why it is said twenty four bits are on. But let's say if I write this in this manner: one ninety two one sixty eight ten dot ten slash twenty six. So what does this mean? This means that now 26 bits will be on, which means that the eight bits from the first octet will be on, eight bits from the second octet will be on, and eight bits from the third octet will be on, and there will be two more bits on from the host side as well. So this makes it 26 bits on. So the subnet mask will be this. Um, so, uh, so this way of writing the IP address, this way of writing the IP address, when we write this IP address in this shape, this is known as, uh, this is known as CIDR notation. CIDR notation. This is uh, classless, uh, this is uh, CIDR notation, if I can remember here. Uh, so, CIDR notation stands for uh, CIDR stands for classless interdomain routing. So this is classless interdomain routing. CIDR simply represents CIDR simply represents that what is the subnet mask of this. And you might have seen that I think when we were configuring the failover cluster or maybe when we were configuring uh, the WSUS within one of these services, you had to enter the IP address in this. Actually, when you were uh, setting up the sites in Active Directory that we will uh, do in the next training. So uh, in the beginning, when you were setting up the site, it needed an IP address in this notation. So this notation is just to uh, just for the networking team, the networking engineers to easily identify what will be the subnet mask of this IP address. So this represents this. Now let's see that is class A, class B, and class C. So in this, uh, let's just uh, look at this. What will be the CIDR notation of this? So class A IP address starts from 10.0.0. And what will be the CIDR notation? It will be only 8. Why? Because there is only one octet, uh, one 8 bits are dedicated for the network. What will be the CIDR notation for, for uh, class B? It is 172, 16.0.0. And it will be 16 because 16 bits are dedicated for the network. So 8 bits here and 8 bits here. So 16. And class C will be what will be the side notation of class C? 24. 24, exactly. Because all these three octets are dedicated for class C address. So this represents, so now if you see these, uh, you can easily determine the subnet mask of this. So what will be the subnet mask of this will be 255.0.0.0. Uh, what will be the subnet mask of this? 255.255.0.0. And what will be the subnet mask of this? This will be, cause there are 24 bits dedicated for the network. So this will be 255.255.255.0. Okay. 
Okay, everyone. So let's quickly recap in five minutes what we have learned today, and then we will call it a night. Uh, I know that uh, today uh, was a kind of a difficult uh, topic, but it's not that difficult. There is a logic behind all that. So starting with IP address. So today we are understanding what is the IP address. Uh, IP address is it's a unique number. It's an it's to identify devices over the network throughout the world. How can you control the use of IP addresses? And the example we uh, the example we learned from the SIN number in Canada, passport numbers, employee IDs, phone numbers are unique throughout the world. And any device on the network, any device. <clears throat> So any device on the any device on the network needs to have an IP address. And how many devices needs an IP address? All the devices on the network needs an IP address. So so here, I'm sorry guys, my throat is now dry so that's why and just little just five more minutes on this and the thing that i wanted to show you is iot 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 is that new concept throughout the world that would needs trillions and what is after trillion maybe gazillion ip addresses throughout the world so if i can change that into image IoT is that concept where everything will be connected to the network, everything. So here you can see IoT is that concept. So I would uh, suggest uh, you can you watch a video, maybe 10, 15 minutes video on IoT and see what is an IoT just as an introduction because this will be here. You can see IoT is basically connected to everything. It's connected to your bulb, uh, your uh, everything, all the appliances, games, and even your coffee machine and your washer and dryer. So IoT will be connected to each and everything and these all things will be. So this is where you need more and more IP addresses. This is, the, this is why they invented IPv6. So IPv4 will not be enough for this and IoT is still a concept. It's not a new concept. IBM and companies like Microsoft, they are, they are working on this for the last 10 years. And uh, but it is still not mature enough that all everything now you are but you started hearing a concept of smart city, smart homes, smart cars, smartphones are there, but then there are smart cities that is all connected toward uh, with with uh, with all this and everything will communicate with the with the network. So this is why there is more need of IP addresses. Then we understood the addresses, physical address and logical address of a device. Uh, the physical address of a device is known as a MAC address and logical address is known as the IP address. Then the IP addresses can be divided into two IPv4 and IPv6. IPv4 is older IP address. IPv6 is a newer IP address. And we have a private IPv4 can be divided into private IP address. IPv6, uh, so IPv4 is divided into private IP address and public IP address. Public IP address is for the internet and private IP address now you can understand is only dedicated to local or home network. Then we started talking about IPv uh, internet protocol is a 32-bit address. It's a, it has four octet. Each octet cannot have more than 255 numbers. And here uh, each is eight bits of address and each bits of address uh, makes up the total number of IP address. We have also already reviewed this, that it's a digital signal. This is why it's a binary language. Then we went through understanding of conversion to binary to decimal language. So if you can make this simple table, uh, then you can easily convert from binary to uh, decimal language and or back to decimal uh, lang or from binary to decimal by using this table. But if you have a calculator, then you don't need this. Uh, next, uh, we also discussed about uh, classes of IP addresses. So there are IP addresses that are divided into these classes. 10 range is dedicated for large networks. Why? Because, uh, it, because 10 range can have most number of hosts. 
Why? Because the last three octets in the 10 range is all for the host. Uh, in B class, there is only two octets uh, reserved for the host and two for the network. So this is medium to large size organization. And in C, the first three octets are uh, only uh, are dedicated for the network and last octet is dedicated for the host. The last two classes are only for research purposes. And then we also spoke about uh, loopback address. Loopback address is to see that if your network is fine, your network card is working fine, um, and it's, a, it's called a loopback address. Then we talked about uh, why classes, uh, because there are these three different type of companies, large companies, small and medium sized companies. In small companies, we can use class C addresses. A smaller range of hosts. So it has a smallest range of hosts, whereas medium size, uh, we can use class B IP address, which is uh, 172 range. And in large companies, we can use class A IP address, which is 10 range IP address. And then here we spoke about class A is uh, uh, the first octet is dedicated to network. And there is a logic behind this that we call it 255. Uh, the subnet mask is always 255 because it is 2 raised to the power 8. So why is it 255? Why is it not 256? Anyone? Because last digit is 255 for uh, binary language. Optic. No, 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 no. Last digit for binary language is 256. Oh. But why cannot we use 256? Because it starts from zero. Because we start from oh. IP addresses starts from zero. Uh, it's uh, uh, so Asher is saying it's stored null. Uh, actually, um, no. It's uh, two fifty five. Two fifty five cannot be used because it starts from zero. That's very uh, simple uh, understanding. Because all IP so zero IP address zero represents the network ID. Uh, zero represents the network ID. Uh, yes, in databases, it is the concept, uh, Asher. Yes, due to indexing, yes. So the, we have, we can use uh, null as well. But here in, in IP addressing, uh, the straightforward understanding is, uh, simple understanding is, they start from zero to last digit is 255. If we would have started from one, then it would have been 256. So in IP address, you will never see 256 in this. Uh, so here, uh, so total number of IP address can be used in IPv4 is 4.2 billion. The problem was that there were more, there, there, is, there was more requirement of IP addresses. Uh, this is why they came up with the, in, with the concept of, uh, with the concept of private and, uh, and public IP addressing. So in class B, there can be total number of hosts can be 65,000. In class C, there can be 255 hosts in this network. And uh, from this slide, we have private and public IP addresses. In private, we can use these ranges. So interview question. Interview question is, uh, what, which, uh, what are the private IP address range? The answer is, in class A, it's the range 10. In uh, class B, it is 172 is private range. And can we use 173 for a, a company internal IP address? No, we cannot. Why? Because 173 might be used somewhere on the public internet. So you cannot have a public internet IP address used inside your own organization. Can you use, uh, let's say if my Google IP address was, uh, Google IP address is two, uh, 216. So only the first letter, in order to see what classes this belongs to, I don't need to look at the other ad numbers. I just need to look at the first number. So this is which class, is it class A, B, or C? It's class C IP address. So class C IP address, can I use this inside my network? No, I cannot. Why? Because this is a public IP address. Uh, so what is, so inside the organization, inside the home, inside Tim Hortons, in, inside a hospital, inside a hotel, all everywhere inside the network, we can use any IP address from this range, okay? Now the good thing everyone is that we don't need to design all this. We are learning this for the net for actually for the sake of information as well. But uh, it is network engineers who work on these numbers and they uh, basically uh, work on this designing on this and they do all this maths. We don't need to do the maths. What we need that we uh, they will provide us the range and we will configure that on our servers. So what is our 
responsibility in terms of IP addresses. We receive their, we receive the numbers from the networking team and we configure them where they need to be configured on the servers, on the devices, we configure them. Okay. And uh, then we discussed the difference between private and public IP addresses here. Uh, and we know that there are more IP addresses. So three private ranges is 10, 172, 192. So have them on your fingertips, everyone. What is the private range of IP address? Three, 10 IP range, 172, 192. Next one is here we understood the concept of uh, uh, concept of netting and netting what it does netting connects one public IP address to hundreds of private IP addresses. So with the help of NAT, I would say Mr. NAT respectfully Mr. NAT is saved us uh, from uh, from actually uh, from uh, from actually loss of uh, IP address. I mean that it 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 filled up the gap between the public and it filled up the gap of uh, millions of IP addresses that were required back in 90s so that all devices can connect. So with the use of NAT, which is network address translation, with the use of NAT, one public IP address can be translated into hundreds of private IP addresses. So uh, let's talk about, so at home, it is, it seems uh, sensible. I mean, it, see, it makes sense uh, that at home, we have only 20 or 25 or 30 at max devices that needs to connect to public network. Uh, so at home, it makes sense. But what about Rogers? What about Bell Company? What about uh, uh, a Bank of America or, or a big organization that has thousands of computers on this side? How many public IP addresses would they need? I would say they, they might need, it. the largest organization might not need more than 10 public IP addresses, the largest that has 100,000 devices connected. On this side, they only need fewer IP addresses. And why am I saying that they need 10 IP addresses even because they have some websites that are dedicated to their public IP address. Otherwise, connecting to internet, only one IP address is enough to connect their complete network to, pub to public network. So this is the power of NAT. Then in the next lecture, we will discuss more on classful and classless IP address. And, uh, and here we also discuss that the CIDR notation. So re please remember CIDR notation uh, for the next lecture. We will continue from here. CIDR is just how do you convert this number into a subnet mask? So all we need to do, so whatever the number is here, we need to convert that to the number of bits on and that will give you the subnet mask for this. Okay. So guys, everyone, thank you for your patience. This is all for today. I know it was on the dry side today, but uh, this is an important information and this is very important for a system admin, cloud admin to understand. Any questions? Okay. So if there are no questions, guys, please work on your custom lab. Please also work on your exam as well. Uh, remember these, uh, these uh, let's say if we spend uh, five to six months or uh, uh, no. Yes, so this will be, it will be around two and a half months already we spent on this and uh, remaining is five to six months will affect, inshallah, will affect your next eight years, next eight years. You will get good contracts and everything. It, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's already a proven concept. So please work hard on this. I know it will be difficult, but take out the time to complete the lab and also understand the concept and also review this lecture as well. Thank you, sir. Okay, then the, uh, what is the deadline for this project, Custom Lab? Uh, tenth. Remember that we said uh, tenth, oh, of, tenth of, October, of October, right? Wonderful. So this is enough okay. time. Please uh, spend time and finish the lab. Yes, thank Sir, you. We okay. not sure. upgrade the uh, 2012 uh, server. I don't know. Uh, it was not giving us option, you know, to keep the files. Keep oh, the server. so so which means that when you upgraded, it removed all the configuration, right? Uh, yes, sir. The option was grayed out, you know. Oh, it was grayed yes. out. Yeah. It happened with me as well, uh, because when I updated to that server, I had to reconfigure it. Okay. Um, so try to find out, since it is a custom lab, I can, I can give you, 
tips as well but on your own try to find out that if you can upgrade from 2012 to 2016 or what is the right way of upgrading and keeping the configuration there has to be a way right way to do this okay yeah okay then bhai i have to leave I okay to uh, excellent yeah. guys excellent thank you so much and i'll be here if you have questions sir i have a question yes please go ahead net and iot what's the combination uh net is a concept uh, i i think there is no direct uh, combination uh, between net and iot uh, net is uh, basically for the purpose of connecting private network to a public network so this is but iot is a bigger fish it's a it's a bigger fish in terms of that iot is basically connecting through uh, i mean your everything to the internet so okay so what is the purpose of connecting everything to the internet the main concept behind nat is sorry iot is that um, so uh, for an example let's say you need to know the life of your furniture that you're using so if somebody is sitting on a chair uh, then there will be certain weight that will be put on the chair and then uh, there there will be some lifetime that that chair can uh, can go through and same goes for all of the other devices as well let's say you want to switch on the juicer right from your phone and then you want to make sure the change the clock and all that maybe drill and this and that and I, so this is moving toward machine learning and artificial intelligence so i think there is no direct connection between nat and iot iot is a different concept and nat is different but iot and ai has uh, has a big combination strong oh yeah yeah for sure right? for sure yeah. iot yeah. and machine learning and in artificial intelligence they're all together and they will make up the the the, the robots okay okay one more thing sir if you have time yes please go ahead uh google use dns 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8, right google google dns using 8.8.8.8 right yes so there are two international dns that everyone can use this is 4.4.4.4 and 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8. so it's not only google these are just these are just a uh, uh, global dns that anyone can use okay 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 because sometimes i troubleshoot and some the small machines i use dns you know 8.8.4.4 that's it yeah it can be so if uh, if anywhere if anywhere where uh, the normal dns doesn't work these two will work if you have internet yeah that's true okay all set Perfect. sir thank you very okay, much okay very good very good Take so uh, excellent see you in the next lecture guys and ja javed uh, will contact you i guess he has your number yes yes for sure yeah. for sure anyway. because uh, the good thing with him is that he is already ccnp and ccna Oh wow wow so so everything that we discussed today i think this is already on your fingertips javed yes yes he has okay he has it okay very good and uh, rest he will talk with you how he going to proceed further. no problem no problem any time okay sir thank okay. you thank you okay thank, thank you thank you okay ja kitna aage yahan se aage yeah अच्छे लेक्चरर वे बहुत अच्छे हैं यार ये जबरदस्त लेक्चर जबरदस्त है मतलब ऐसा लगा सामने ही खड़े हैं सामने ही पढ़ रहे